Uh, right. Hello, welcome to the Infrarunners. Um, this is episode 42, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's 42. Um, there's two episodes we're going to be put out later today. Um, they're bias guides, but we wanted to put some post-production work in. But expect our bias guide on the hawk and the hammerhead. And uh, today is the Origin Day uh, sale. And uh, what can I say? Uh, a little light on the information there, and uh, personally, I think the 600 was a bit of a face palm. Yeah. <sighs> Bit of um, make you want to vomit. Yep. So we're joined by Algrid today. He's a hey guy's esteemed one guest. Of our, yes. <laughs> yeah, like camera. Yeah. Yeah. So um, should we uh, start out by talking about the the? Do you want to go straight to the eight ninety jump, or do you want to go into the six hundred die first? Oh, let's cover the three hundred and the complete lack of uh, showing us anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think I think they've kind of left that because they're going to do the rework. Obviously, that's my um, take on it. We know that they're going to start that soonish. So I hear they have been putting a fair bit of work into the uh, concepting phase of the three hundred rework, and I honestly thought that they were going to show off uh, some of that because I, I know it was in the works, and I think there was a lost opportunity. I think that would have been more interesting than the six hundred and eight ninety jump that they showed. Yeah. yeah. I'd agree with that, Hayes. I, I think they've they'd been telling us we're reworking the, the 300 series and they've got these ships in in game already and so people are already looking forward to them. So they could have, from the work they've done, updated the, the graphics for it and then also use those in the, 600, in the 600 series. But it seems they're doing the 600 first and then using the assets they make for that to upgrade the others. But yeah, I agree. Do you, do you think they're actually going to use the assets? I think it'll be backwards, actually. I think that they seem to be doing the 600i and using those assets to scale up to the jump and more likely use that to scale down to the origin. That yeah, seems to... What, uh, the 300i. That, that's, oh, what I was, that's what I was saying. Sorry, I thought you said 300 and up to the others. Sorry, my bad. No, no, no. It, they could have done that because it seemed that's what they implied, that they've actually taken the thing, no, we're going to do the 600. And that's going to give us assets we can use for the 890, and it's going to give us assets we can also then use for the 300. I suppose the big takeaway for that, for the 300 series, is the lines and the forms we see on the 600 that they're Yeah, I they're think they'll replicate that, that with the 300. That's what we'll see in the 300. That's what we'll see ending up on the, the M50. That's what we'll see on the 85X. The and those M50. lines look pretty sweet. M50 looks just yeah. good as it is. I, I'd be disappointed yeah. if they change that. I, I kind of agree. I think the M50 is in a good spot there. Um, I would like to see some more of those sleek lines, though. Like, um, you know, the, the, the kind of cool curvatures they showed in the stairs and stuff like that, and the mixing up of materials. I think that would be some interesting things I'd like to see uh, flow onto the 300 series. I think it's a little bit um, too modern, as in, as in today modern. Um, yep. Rather than it, it's not it's not sleek enough the 300i it it really is the closest thing we've got to a space shuttle it looks uh, somewhere between a space shuttle and a, a modern day uh, fighter at the moment um, you know and it's got some angular lines I reckon it would be better with some sleeker lines and if you think about how the the wings on the 300i kind of go yep. up and around on it it'd be nice to get some really sleek curvature in that instead of these angular juts that it has yep. at the moment. And I um, think we'll see that. I think we will see that. Like when they when they produced the six the six hundred I, one of the things they said was uh, those curves on the side that they've got on the three hundred series. We we wanted to replicate that and kind of bring them in. And I think those lines we see on the six hundred, we will see on the three hundred. You know, but they will get downplayed, and we'll see those sleek lines. And the three hundred will become that really sleek, fancy ship that it was always touted to be. And now it's. Well, at the, at the moment it's in a bit of a mm, yeah, it's it's not no, a very right. good place. I, I can definitely see if the styled guide moves over, people will um, take another look at that ship and go, "Ooh, look, what's that? Damn!" That yeah, looks nice at the me. moment it's a nineteen seventies Volvo. <laughs> do, do you do you think that'll they'll luxury tax it at all, and it'll jump in price a little? I hope not. I thought it's it was already luxury tax. Mm. 
Yeah, I suppose as a starter ship, it's more expensive, isn't it? Yeah. Would you class it as a starter or advanced starter? A starter. Starter. Yeah. So you, I, I, you don't think it'll? Uh, well, I think it already starts to fall into that advanced starter category. It's about what I um I helped a friend with one yesterday, and um it's only five dollars under an Avenger, uh, so I'd still I'd still pick the Avenger over the three hundred series at the moment, but that's just me. Um, I wait think- and see, I guess. It comes so where do you put either specialization or utility? And the Avengers are the one that has the utility and is well rounded. But then uh, more advanced starters for me would be things like uh, heralds or uh, like prospectors, mm. and you know. So where do you put the uh, core? In well, the core the, the core is actually the only official advanced starter. It oh, is right. the only so one. Said- yeah, so you see that I think that's seventy-five dollars. Don't quote me on that. I'm not good with the pricing I on think that it's one. Ninety-three Australian. Ninety-three. Yeah, that that would be about that out and it didn't do the variants, so it's sort of like it's been left in a bad place. But if they flesh out those yeah. variants that you can upgrade to and from, then yeah. I think the core has a lot of prospect to be something. I also yeah. think it needs a bit of a rebalance when it comes to term of strength. It's quite weak at the moment. It's uh, because it's got such a large surface area. It's actually really easy to hit, um, oh, and so oh, wow. it tends to, yeah. yeah, it goes bust really quickly. So um, I think surprisingly, or well, not surprisingly, but it it. it it's going to need a buff in shields just because of its size. It's a bit weird. It was supposed um, to be a little more chunky than the other starters too. It was advertised for that, you know, a bit more rougher and durable. And yeah, so you're right. It's... Yeah. I kind of, yeah. um, just Brian's just said in the, the chat there, Reliance seems a little bit lost. And I kind of agree with that. It, um, yeah. it, 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 it's a really cool looking ship. And I, I think the reason why it's taken as advanced starter is the fact that you can put two people in it. It's one of the smaller ships that hold two people. Um, and I can see yeah. it be really good for um, not, a, not like a more, um, uh, someone that wants to bring a friend that, that, that he's more experienced and they're not, so he can show him the lay of the land, so to speak, type of ship. That's where I see that ship sitting. Um, or two friends that just want to play the game together from day one. Um, yep. That's what, where I see that. And I uh, just with, I, I think it'll... Uh, it doesn't need a rework. It just needs a, a rebalancing of its shields or something like that or, or a bit more armor. And I, I think we'll see that given time when they sweep back around and do the variants for it. Um, they have stated, though, that the original plan was to actually do every ship before doing variants, but they've kind of broken that rule a bit, haven't they? So I guess we'll wait and see on that one. Okay, yeah. Wait and see. Um, should we move on to the 600i then, gents? Yeah. Uh... I guess we've got to do it. It's um, I, I check up the thumbnail. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I knew I was going to have to remind you. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to remind yeah, you. You have to put it right. I need a taser just to shove up your butt. This will get you working. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. But, uh, I'd be good if I was down where Algrid was. I could do. I could do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. You got to give me the symbol. Uh, yeah, I it. think I think that's why he's put me above me it, above him today. Because all week I've been underneath him and I've been doing really stupid shit to him. So yeah, he's he's, he's thought ahead that, this time. Yeah, he can uh, kind of play with his hair and you know. I was really disappointed with the the six hundred because like the way they talked about it, they wanted to double down on luxury and how useless luxury is because they they basically they they talked about it's not a passenger transport and they made that very clear and then they said um, luxury is supposed to be something that uh, real players and org members are going to use for a conference or something fancy or and and mm. they're going to love it and but it has no real actual utility or purpose or anything else and other I, than looking amazing and, 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 so and like, I felt like vomiting <laughs> I, I felt like vomiting exactly I mean yeah, I'm right. spending all this money and that's the whole purpose of all this this the direction of this ship I mean, if I was a big fancy pants um, and and rich employee, and I wanted to do a huge big conference, I'd do it on something that has those facilities. It'd be an one. I'd either choose an 890 jump or an Idris and Javelin, where they have those huge briefing rooms, and I'm in a ship that yep. can actually do something. <laughs> Did you um get the feeling like this is the feeling I got when they were talking about um, 
like they're going, oh yeah, this is someone that's really high up in an org that would like to show off his position and blah blah blah. All I heard was make myself a target. That's all I heard. Like, did you did you guys get that? Like, I'll take a ship that's got inferior guns and looks all bling bling, <laughs> and yeah, and paint a target on my back so you can fuck me I right up. A like, that's a bigger message. I heard like, yep. uh, this is a way to show off your e peen, and you know this is this is how it's yep. doing. Everyone's gonna want it, and I'm like, uh, uh, no, you. No. No, I, for no, me, I, they actually just made me want to melt and ditch it altogether. That sales pitch was the worst sales pitch ever. It's th that's the equivalent of did you just assume my gender, but like <laughs> telling us who we should be attracted to type of it. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. Well, <laughs> like I say, for me, that almost, you know, that's one of the things that made me, uh, yeah, maybe I'm going to be melting 600. Yeah, I, I, I've already got a hand that's all it is? for it. It's I, like... I was. I was hoping we would hear that Q&A that we were promised as well, and maybe another module mm, uh, yep. to, to show a bit of variety, but... I was expecting it, because Ben yep. promised a, a Q&A on the uh, 600, and, you know, reasonably soon at that, it seemed he was uh, intending to. And the fact that they, they blew that chance to revisit that, and instead doubled down on the useless luxury that doesn't actually have any function in-game. It's like... How can you call it... Well, the function is the gameplay that'll offer being able to transport VIPs, and I can't it's see like transporting one VIP. Gameplay. They really, really yeah. liberated that. Yeah, so I, I don't know how you can... How much different is transporting one VIP going to be to transporting, like, people in general and, say, a general Starliner? But I, I wanted to ask the question, how can you call it a modular ship when there's only really two modules? It's not... Do you mean it's not one, one it's not flexible module, and then one module that actually does something and that's the only yeah. thing only thing the ship's going to be good at because yeah. there's only one well, really. in, in yeah. terms of well two modules if you count the if you take the idea of doing um executive executive transport so in the same way that you've got you know your rich people wanting to do but be the, transported somewhere they, they weren't so, saying like, that is a career though they were saying just real players would like that and they, they'd be showing off, but not they had no yeah. mention. In fact, they distanced themselves from any idea that that would be a career. Um, but they, they have always said that, the, you know, it's it's the same type of ship as the, the Phoenix in that card when you've got the that fancy room. Yeah. Desperate. They, um, just to add to what you're saying, our grid, uh, Edison actually says that in chat. Today did tell us that they do, you can do um, transporting VIPs on the Origin 300. They did actually state that. Um, so previously, pre yeah, sorry, I'm terrible with names. Yeah, so um, they probably did actually now say that you can do VIP missions with the, with the 300i, where previously they haven't stated that. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard it one way or the other, to be honest, but um, uh, today they did kind of reiterate you can do that and um they they did kind of almost try and link did you hear the reference to the to the hot tub at all yeah yes yeah. maybe yeah, one so... of... oh, <laughs> oh, no. that's, a, that's, that's another huge pile of salt why did they poke that yeah yeah i don't know i don't know okay. um it, it, man if they make the the phoenix at any way modular at all like people want the the phoenix for the the, the hard points um yeah they don't want it for the bling bling. Like I didn't buy when the upgrade was out there for the Phoenix when I should have brought it. I didn't buy it because they didn't have ship modularity then. But I wanted it for the hard points. But I didn't want to be able to remove all the versatility from my constellation. Now you can't buy that upgrade, and now you want it. I want it really bad because I've got a I've got a rear admiral package and it's just like well I can't just turn around and melt that and anyone knows yep. what a rear admiral pa package is it comes with physical goods and it's back from me like that thing's worth a a lot of money now so it's not worth me melting like it's more valuable than the melt value it's ridiculous but anyway my point being is I I want to do right by CG but I can't and and if I want to buy one of those upgrades literally it costs like I think it's $425 the last time I saw one and it was originally $125 so just that's an upgrade for that yeah. price that's and kind that's of insane. ridiculous that's insane insanity and that you know CRG wonder why people use the black market and it's because of things like that that why can't I I want to give you money why don't you let me give you money I don't even care if they charge me double for the upgrade I just want the ability to be able to buy the upgrade. And the fact that well, they won't even give it to me kind of shits me. 
Well, that's one one of the things that get a lot of the um, the bigger pack owners, isn't it? The, the fact that you are kind of these days now being locked into this massive ship thing, where upgrading and module and changing the ships and that are inside is becoming really, really hard. Yet yeah, it was one of the things that was always said. No, we, we like, have these ships, and you can do the changes that you want. But oh, it's becoming so hard. And and I, I don't get that. Like, why why are they? I, I know from a developer perspective, they want to start to nail down what ships people have and stuff have. like that. But by the same token, people want the ships that they want, and so basically, you have to be able to allow them to do that and work around it, rather than trying to lock it down. You need to you need to be able to go. Uh, you should have released the ships in a better order, type of thing. But um, I think they need to be able to make their design flexible, and I think they need to go. All right, so things here are going to change, and basically be able to have build a system with statistics. So as people get more of one ship, they can you know lessen the AI or increase the AI number of ships to scale to fit that. And 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 the other thing with uh, with any ship package, any ship we buy now, one of the big problems is because the ships are still in in uh, development, change. You buy one ship, and you go, okay, it's this, and then as it goes in, it totally changes its purpose or or look or whatever, and you go, oh, that's not actually what it was after, and mm. I can't really change it now because you're locking me in, and so there's this great problem. I can understand why they want to lock ships in and why they want to know the numbers, but it also feels you can't really do that while we still don't know what those ships are really operating like. Mm. Well, we could actually use that as a really good segue because that's uh, something Dyson linked us this morning about the um, 890 jump. Um, it's now been advertised as multiple different things. Um, so do you want to go? Do you guys want to move on to the 890 jump and we'll talk about that? Um, I remember it being touted as a shopping mall at one point. Um, I've heard it called a flying hotel. What are some of the other ones you guys have heard of? Uh, 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 pirate killing uh, menace that you know is, you know uh, it used to be a gunship at some point. You know, it's, uh, it's been many things. What are you, Algar? An unarmored, unarmored um, corvette, basically. Corvette size, fancy thing. A yacht, um, I've heard it called a yacht. as well. Super yacht. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, it's almost like it's got a bit of an identity crisis in a way. Um, yeah, I I know they haven't started work on it, but maybe that's why it's jumped around so much because they kind of haven't started work on it. They don't fully understand what it's going to be itself yet. But well, I, I just hope that they don't take uh, kudos from the 600 and want to copy what their idea of luxury is and, and paint that all over this ship because that's not what that ship was sold as. Well, I think they will take, I think the, they will. take the design groups of <laughs> the 600 that they develop and put it on. Uh, whether they keep the abilities of the 890 jump as to what they said, that's another thing. But now is the time for 890 jump owners to actually get in the into the chats and say, hey, this is what we want in the 890. Mm. Don't leave it until they bring out the 890 yeah. and, so, and then complain. And, and oh, they've don't, told don't you us. Dare go down the road the 600 is. There, there's a question they've, for you, boys. They've then. told us. They've told us the 890 jump is in white boxing and concepting. So what do you now want is it, the time. Tell us what you want it to be, Algrid. What do you want it to be, man? Like, <sighs> why here on your know. soapbox? Tell us, man. What do, what do you want well, it to I, be? Well, I personally don't really, really know. I would. I would like it to be modular. So I'd like that Antrium to be modular. Mm. There are times you do want that big Antrium where you can take people and view the stars and take Dirk it as a, a touring vessel. But just the look of it to me always made me think this would be a great this would be a great high market hospital ship, you know. Mm. Take bits out, put hospital bits in. Uh, the way it had its double bridge, it was a it, it was almost a, a perfect um, fleet uh, coordinator. All right, but. You know, but it, you, you don't want it to be as heavy layout as an Idris or a, a regular Corvette. Um, yeah, so there's lots of things it could be, but do you want me to give you kind of my developer response on 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 your yeah, suggestions there? Um, the hospital one's a hard one because it wouldn't just require switching the atrium; you'd also be switching internal rooms, so you'd be having uh, it'd be more fully modular rather than just one room swapping out. Um, but some of the things like I heard today 
on the show, like, you know, when he talked about a pit fighter or having an arena or an orchestra yep. or something like that, if it was just that back atrium that switched out, I reckon that'd be freaking awesome. I can see that happening, actually. I actually think that's where they will take it, um, yep. especially with what they've hinted today on um, the ATV. Um, but a hospital, that that one, that one's probably the only one I, can't, I, I, I think would be unlikely because it would require... Like, if you look at the, fo- the thumbnail up there in the corner, you've got your atrium and then you've got your middle part of this ship and then you've got your front part. Where the hospital beds would be would be in that middle part. And that, um, unless you can change it so it's just the, the layout changes, so you can put different uh, furniture in the rooms, if you could do it like that, then, yeah, maybe it could be hospital. But um, an actual room for medical facilities, that would be a whole switch of a room. But, again, well, you, they can do it. Had, it's just how much you work had the it is. A- if you had the atrium as a section that, Modular was a modular section that pulled out and was replaced. That modular section, that that uh, circular area or area where the atrium was, mm-hmm. that's a three that's a three floor uh, atrium area. That would be so you could actually have that that module that does have three floors in it. Yeah, it'd, pro- it'd probably be the only room that is not um, atrium anymore. It'd become like a solid yeah room right. type thing so yeah as long as you're aware of the, that it wouldn't be an atrium anymore and only the top floor and you, you could probably even make it so it's just three rooms so you've got three vips in a hospital um i could kind yep. of see that so you could might it might be something for i'm thinking um in uh what's it prometheus where they had the old guy it, it's a hospital ship for some like a like just one person like that um yeah i could see that happening as well, well it's um, a good search and rescue vessel because one you've got the speed and two you've got snobs that can yeah. give you a second person so you could you know rescue them from space after that take them back and do light medical treatment and you know as a part of a fleet that needs a search and rescue and perhaps a cnc type ship that's you know leading the fleet um, you want yep. something that can maneuver and stay out of trouble. It's perfect for that. And it certainly so, was built as having those abilities of being fast, maneuverable, and with the ability to defend itself. May not have the attack weapons, but certainly so, has the defense. So, like a Intel module that kind of so it goes into the command and control, and you basically would have extra computers in that atrium area for yep. scanning and screens to connect to different communication hubs of different ships and stuff like that. Yeah, I can see that one. Um, so you've kind of got you'd get a, something like a command and control, possibility of a VIP type hospital. Um, I could see something like an orchestra, a shopping mall, um, and there was one other. Oh, and the pit fighting that you mentioned. I thought that was yeah. kind of interesting. Um, so that'd be like a, a boxing match or something like that between. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe gam- a gambling one, like oh, casino. Yeah, and and while while you were on the shopping mall, the shopping mall. And we were talking about it before the stream started. The shopping mall would make it a really nice counterpoint to the um, uh, BMM as a, as a big uh, fancy bazaar. Like, yeah, yeah, because they're both mm-hmm. they're both big ships. They're both you know, uh, mm-hmm. so it'd give it would give that nice um, nice comparison. Yeah. comparison. Yeah. and every they even stated that in the ATV as well. They were talking about how they're at that point now where they're making. Um, uh, ships that are next to each other. I can't think yeah. of the word they use, but they they reference the constellation to the 300i. Sorry, Hayes, you were going to say? Well, I, I think it's just a great ship if you can get something like the 600i has uh, to be able to put it an exploration module in. Um, I'm pretty sure it can already take a rover and it's got the snubs, but the idea of putting a, a science and uh, research, just a little module that sticks in in one mm. of the areas, that it greatly expands what this ship is, you know. And the fact that this ship, using it, the, a, the fact that the A90 jump has that double bridge Mm. That is, um, that's the only ship that I know of that's really actually got that battle bridge and open bridge. So that makes it unique in that sense, and yeah, and that does I'm, give it that. I'm kind that, of uh, think. Go on. I was just gonna say, I'm just kind of having that uh, a thought at the moment. Like, if you think of it as a, as a customizable Playboy yacht, you could literally make it so as a you know you're that playboy you can customize as you want you know when you get those in real life how people get these crazy yeah. customized things so it has modules to the the midsection and the atrium and you can pick the atrium module that you want and you can probably pick you know th- uh, like i don't know how many modules you could have in that midsection let's just say for argument's sake you could have eight because it's yeah. 
you know, four so by big. four grid or something like that. Yeah. So, you, you know, you could have a science module in there and you could make your drugs if that's what you want to do. And then you could have a hospital one if that's what you want. And you could have a science one. And you, 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 the, my point being is that that would actually be a really cool thing. You could, you know, you could put in a party nightclub if that's what you want in one room. Um, <coughs> to the point you could even make it a little bit like the Endeavor where, um, if it's a grid, say a two by two grid, you could even if say you make it a nightclub, it takes up that whole space. Or you could just you know get certain rooms that take out, you know, so you can get a, a customizable version. That would yeah. be how I would take this ship because then you could, um, being such a, an expensive ship, you can customize it the way you want. That all of a sudden makes this ship really interesting to me if it was done that way. Um, but it's certainly not the way they seem to be hinting it's going by the 600i. No. I, I, there's I, one I think... thing that gives me a bit of hope with this ship, though. Like, it used to only have about 500 SCU and cargo. Raising that up to 1,600, that opened the possibilities for this ship as a, a general-purpose ship immensely, even if yeah, you don't well, get those modules. Even with the modules, you could just have a cargo module. That simple. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and again, because it's got decks, you could have different modules that go on the bottom floor to what goes on the top. Like, this is this is such a big ship, and, and the more I think about it, I know this idea is only kind of coming to me, but that's where I'd take the ship, a Playboy ship. Like, that's where I'd take it. The billionaire Playboy customizable route where you can pick everything from um, your accents. and you, you know how you get all those crazy color combinations and you get... Like, like, even with guns, people buy, like, pink AKs and shit like that. I'm talking about just some crazy customization where you can just make it whatever you want, like, um, you know, yeah. uh, like, like that, and that doesn't have to be done straight away, like, but down the road, it'd be really cool. If you if you want leopard skin print on the wall, you can have it, that type of thing. Um, and, and that would that actually justify the cost of these luxury ships, being able to just be super customizable and over the top. Um, and I and I could see the same thing on the the six hundred I and the three hundred I, and that's a lot of that's just texture work. Um, but actual modules as well would be really cool. And it's the same thing with the six hundred I. Ironically, it'd be great if it had a lot more modules. Yep. Well, I think the modules for the six hundred I will come, but Not the fact that I, I was actually hoping we'd have seen we'd have heard more about them on on this on their blurb today, but. No, nothing. I I was I kind of thought the eight ninety jump would be a bit a little bit like it was today because of what we'd seen with the merchantman. I was just like, well, they're holding back. That means they're going to hold back across the board. Like, um, at least even this time was, they were honest. They were yeah. honest about the fact that they've got nowhere with the jump, and you know, and the banner yep. merchantman is even further behind in terms of concept ready, and yet they think, oh, look at all this work we've done on it. I'm like. Really? <laughs> Unfortunately, there is some technical limitations with the um, the Banu there. So, still, they they, they tried said, to sell it off as if they they were getting all this stuff done, and I'm just like, uh, at least with the yeah. Chinese, they they went out and said it what it was. Well, they kind of they kind of alluded to the fact previously they'd been working on the Banu, but then they kind of showed what they they'd come up with, and they hadn't come up with very much. So that yeah, I kind of so, agree with it. So, yeah. question for you. How big do you think the 890 jump will become? Um, at least as big as a Polaris. Because all ships yeah. are becoming Polaris size these days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, because like all the metrics is supposed to be a huge ship with all these interactable yep. NPC based stuff. So like, um, and that's where it gets all the ships on the metrics. All the ships have to grow in size when they've designed the NPC interactions wrong. And 890 and jump is no exception. Ship. It's an old ship, yeah. So like, and older, sh and we know that older ships do tend to, to grow. So same with the three hundred series. Like, um, mm. well, three hundred series, as the fella says, you know, three hundred series. He was hoping for work on that. Well, we know the, the graphics and stuff from that are going to come from the, the lines and stuff, as we were saying earlier, from the the three hundred series. But with the eight ninety, you know, it'd be nice to yeah, it'd be nice to see those those things come. I do think it'll grow, just like all ships. Um, just because it's an old metric, they didn't have those things set out, so bigger, better, yeah, blingier I, I, than before. With I no think, purpose. 
I think the the things people were worried about was them just chopping the 300i and copying and paste it into the other two. I think they'll definitely take a bit of time to make sure each ship has a, a unique look. Uh, it, it, and, it, and if you look at the other manufacturers, they've done just that. So they have a similarity, but they all have a unique um, look to them. Yeah. And I think uh, that's what they want to do with the 300 is get that style guide for the Origin ships really yeah. down pat. And then transfer that across to the other two ships and so to do a rework on the 300 series now while they're still working out the style guide would be a waste of time or end up with a mess yeah. so when do you think we're going to see these these new ships like the 600 seems to be coming along fairly advanced i think it might be possibly close to completion <laughs> late next year but the 890 jump uh, no promises way down the track i, I don't think late i they kind of hinted that they'll like once they got that stuff nailed down, they'll start working on the 890 jump. But I get the feeling they won't start on the 890 jump until the uh, 600's finished. And the 300, I reckon they'll get that. Done. Yeah, yes. possibly. I possibly reckon. True. I reckon they'll do the 600 and then do do the 300, mm. and then come back to the 890. Mm. Uh, um, you might do some work on it, a little work as it's going, but that'll be the focus. Yeah. One of the one of the things I'd I'd like to touch on really quickly, and I just want to do you agree or do you not disagree? Um, I think one of the reasons why CIG kind of tend to push luxury is this important thing is um, from an art standpoint, it actually does take longer to make because they have to be uh, the textures have to be cleaner and crisper, and they actually also have to put more time into the modelling. I know that sounds like a really weird thing, but it actually means the ships take longer to make. Um, and even things today, like where they're talking about how they do these nice clean panels, and then you pull the panel off, and then it has all the stuff underneath it, and then all the wires are all neat as well. That actually takes longer the, to do than just doing the one. So what they're trying to say is there's almost twice as much art in doing something that's clean and precise and, and performance level grade as opposed to just doing one pass, like say something like Drake, um, that is bare minimalistic. Um, and I think that, that that's what they're trying to hammer home with luxury is luxury takes time. And I think they want people to pay for that. But sorry, excuse me, to the end user, it's still the same result. It's just that it took longer for CIG to get there. And so CIG expect you to kind of pay for that, yet we get the same end result. So that, but, that's where I see a luxury. Yep. But we've got the 890 jump. We're doing that, and it sounds fine, and it's all, all right with that. But then you get, oh, the 890 jump, it's limited, so we're only going to sell this many. And so that almost, we want you to pay for this fact that it's taking us longer to make, but no, we're, we're making it, it limited. Yeah, we're not willing to sell it to you. So we're going to sell it in limited batches so we can jack the price up. But that's often what it seems like. Um, yep. And I know they say it's limited because we actually want to have that, those numbers in the verse and, you know, don't want everyone to be flying an 890 jump in the verse because then it kind of breaks the, the idea. The problem but, is uh, I don't think they're going to sell all those 890 jumps with uh, five-year insurance. Yeah. But it depends how many they sold with four-year insurance. Anyone who bought a, an 890 jump with four-year insurance is a nut if they don't melt it and buy a new one. Yeah, true, pretty much. True. To yeah. get the, to get that extra year, yeah. You know, an extra year of ship hull insurance where I'm not having to pay the insurance in game. Mm. Yeah, true. That is that is a value that is saving in itself. I. I think again, being a limited ship, I think it automatically needs to come with the LTI. That's just me. It's just. It's almost one grand. Uh, it's it's almost yeah. there. Yeah, but it's almost like they've deliberately placed it and they've set this rule in their heads, and so they feel like they're obliged to deliberately only give you. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. I I think the inconsistencies are starting to get to me. <laughs> uh, Camp Jones, I actually would. While, they, while you, you know, the 890 jump was a rare ship, I actually still think it's rare, even with the current sale. Even if there are, even if there's a thousand ships, ten thousand ships in sale, I actually reckon it's still rare. You know, if there's a if there's actually a million players in game with different ships, I know there's 1.9 million accounts, but I reckon half of those are duplicates. Uh, million players in game, ten thousand 890 jumps, drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So I still think it's rare. That's Doesn't seem it, but it is. 
interesting question, uh, Algrid, to go over and Hayes too. How many, um, like of those larger ships now, like the Idris and the Javelins, how many would you speculate over the years now there is out there? Like, uh, we're looking at about 200 every year, and you've done five years now, so was it three? three I can't remember how long they've offered the Idris and the Javelin, but man, there must be a few of them out there now. Would be would be over a thousand at least now, wouldn't you say? Of each of those? At most, I reckon 2,000 um, javelins, and that's really going extreme. Yeah, you've got to you've understand got... a lot of people uh, buy these and then melt them, and then they get stuck in a melt because they've yeah. switched and changed. They just wanted to have the option open right. so that you know they could get that if they needed it. So, yeah, um, but then again, there's also the Armada pack. Those were never limited. How many mm. Armada packs have been sold? Uh, because that was a bloody good buy. Yeah. That was uh, how, mu how much was yeah. it? 2,500 uh, and had Idris and a whole bunch of uh, Aegis ships. Idris and... Yeah, look. Probably a few people upgrading those packs to have the Hammerhead, etc. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not uncommon for people to have an Armada pack and for it to be worth close to four to $5,000 because of all the CCU and they've stuck in the That's room. right. All right, do you want to drop down the uh, 890 jump thumbnail now and we'll, we'll take some questions and if there's uh, not Actually, many more questions. Mind, uh, talking about tomorrow's sale, um, the Consolidated Outland sale. It's uh, yep. supposed to be another classified one. Just so you know, uh, the Armada pack had the Gladius, Super Hornet, Gladiator, Sabre, Gemini, Vanguard, Idris and Retaliator. Edison Trent yeah, says there good. was 5,000 Amato packs sold in the first three days. Wow. That's, yeah, that, that just shows you how good that pack was. That's you know, crazy. That, that pack was by far the best value pack that has been released for a while. Have they, you reckon they'll come up again this year or not? Uh, given it'll sell. <laughs> yeah. If they're after money, yeah, they'll put it up again. Yeah, man, it makes me think I should melt some of my shit and buy one. But um, yeah. You know, if you if you got if you've got an Idris, if you've got all of those ships sitting there in your hangar, and the and that pack comes up again, you're a nut if you don't melt them all and buy that pack. Because that pack, yeah. I think, also, did it come with the game pack as well? Well, um, sure. I'm not too sure. Not too sure. But this year, um, would be a really good year to do it because you'd be able to turn in all your ship. Like, so if, say there's a ship you don't have, you'd be able and to. Switch and the around. Armada pack did come with Squadron 42 and PU and lifetime insurance. So it came with a game pack. So it is a game pack. Basically, I have pretty much most of those ships. So what I'd be gaining is I'd be gaining the um, I'd be gaining the Idris. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Well, even if you've got most of those ships and you're wanting an Idris, yeah, you melt those ships by the Idris, by that pack. You can melt your game pack because you've you've now got that with a LTI, you know, all your ships with LTI, and you pick up the Idris as well for maybe, you know, half the price of what the Idris is going for. So, it's mm. a no-brainer. If that comes up, it's a no-brainer to buy. All right, I'll have to, I'll have to keep an eye out for that one. Then I, I, I didn't spot that last year. I feel really bad now. <laughs> so, what are you guys' expectations for the sale tomorrow? It's one of those classified sales again. Are we expecting a new concept of some sort? We are expecting a concept based on what. Disco said today, though, it could be uh, something related to the. Uh, Do you want me to say what uh, I think it is? Because I'm pretty. You think it's a sure. UAE ship? No, I think it's. I think what he was saying just before it bled out the classified was he said the word how, and so I'm going to go how land claims work. And if you actually listen. And, and yep. repeat those wordings it is in perfect timing with how much was blurred out. Utterly perfect. How land claims work. And if you... Yep. I, I think without a shadow of a doubt, that's what it is. I don't think it's a okay. ship. Um, I'm not saying they're... Like I was saying yesterday, they're possibly going to sell land claims. But now I'm thinking they're not actually going to sell them. They're probably just going to talk about how they work. I think if anything, you, you could get a land claim if you buy a Pioneer. <laughs> Are there, I, it won't yep. be with LTI, will it? So... Mm, no, be interesting. And if it's a if it's a classified thing that goes with the land claims or goes with the you know, supplements of Pioneer, 
I would say it might be things like, uh, you know, the ground defence platforms, you know, the additions you can add to your... Oh, God. It's like, hmm. it's like yeah, modular I, um, things for another ship. Uh, no. Modular um, things for a land base. Uh, I think when the Pioneers with LTI didn't all sell, I don't think the ones with um, insurance will sell, uh, uh, with, you know, five years insurance will sell. Okay. Personally, I don't think the Pioneers are going to sell very well tomorrow, but that's just... I don't know, you guys t correct me if you reckon I'm wrong. I, I don't think they'll sell, personally. My, my, I think I, if I they think have... You're right. But my I think if they have CCU ones, they will, but not the Warbond. They won't do that, because they, they claimed it a limited sale ship, so yep. they screwed themselves there. But um, I, Did I, they uh, sell all the Pioneers when it first came out? No. No. How long did they... There's about 187 left, roughly. All right, it won't sell well. Yeah. yeah. Not but without I... LTI. My personal opinion is that maybe there might be a new consolidated outline ship, just maybe, or vehicle. Um, yep. I, I, I'm very skeptical about land claims or modules being sold, but I, I could see some sort of... I, I, I don't believe it. I'm not going to buy that for a second. Um, yeah. I may be completely wrong about this, but like, I, I think they're going to sell think, um, some sort of ship. I think you've been... I think you're being really optimistic, to be honest. If, I think if it's a but I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Like I love your optimism, and I hope you're right. But sadly, I think I th it's, it's just my pessimism is so heavy with the land claim thing. I'm just like, yeah, uh, no. no. I would like that class. I don't think they'll sell land claims. I think he's literally just going to talk about how they work. Yeah. Just how like, like, oh, says, I suppose just like the origin day disappointment. He goes, you know? we'll talk about how. He goes. Because we'll, and we're going to talk about how, and then it goes, Shh, and 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 I think that's literally what it says: how land claims work. And then, and then he goes, and we'll see you tomorrow, and that's it. That's that's pretty much what I'm sure that they're not going to sell them. I think they're just going to talk about them. I was convinced for a while they were going to sell them, but now I think they're just going to talk about them. Uh, yeah. I would, if they're bringing out a ship, it'll be a mid. I reckon mid-sized ship, because we've got crappy little Mustangs. And we've got the massive pioneer, so it's not going to be first tier or that's my hope. Capital I'm not, size? I'm not sure. We'll see. I would hope I mean, it's middle, middle, middle sized. And if I had to guess what it was, I would say something like a tug, okay, some well, industrial ship, maybe a tug, or or maybe another type of repair ship. I think. Almost, you, hey, Hazen, you go, Hayes. You know what I'm going to say, so go ahead. Yeah, I think. Uh, in the vein of what a consolidated outline is and sort of what Elon Musk is, it needs to be something that's highly innovative that no one else is doing. So it sort of, um, it ticks the boxes in a way that uh, no one else is even going to touch that. It sort, of, it sort of brings something new to the table. So if it is an industry ship, it's going to be um, unique in some way that uh, tackles uh, that industry. It has something special about it that, you know, sets it apart. So. That's the way I see it. Dry yeah, when we, when, yeah. We talk, okay. when, when we talked about it, we kind of speculated that it might be something along the lines of... Because Consolid Outline, Outline is a bit like the Outer Rim in Star Wars. So, um, and if you look at the Pioneer, it's about going out to new worlds and, you know, what Pioneers do. They go where no one has gone before. So, I... Hayes did agree with me, but he didn't repeat it there, so I'm just going to say it, and if he doesn't agree, that's fine. Um, was like a mining ship, I reckon, would be something that they could possibly do, like a middle-sized one. Um, um, salvaging, I think, would be more likely a Drake middle-sized one, but, um, yeah, if I saw a, a, um, ships built around the, the pioneering... Um, that's what I see Consolidated Outland in, as the uh, pioneers of going out and well, going to new areas don't forget as the well pioneers as pitch was the idea that taking um construction out of the big corporations hands and putting it into the everyday individuals yeah. um and you know if you had a mining ship that was like that well the orion's only for corporations because it's a big ship um maybe yep. if you had a mining ship that could compete they, this Hang is on, a marketing guys. pr but that's the that's that's just the one ship. When you also take the Mustang into account and how that was made, and what why it was pitched in this cheap ship for the everyman. Mm. Once you combine those two things together, it's about making ships that are affordable for people that are going out and 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 experiencing the um, the new frontier and stuff. And that that's what I think their their mantra is. And and that's why I think the 
that mining could possibly be one and they're going you know the origins this huge ass capital ship so let's make a smaller mining ship for the every man that small crew and it's got the gold rush feel that's yeah. that's where i'm yeah. you, i think you know what i'm trying to say now so um i think the mining one is a possibility but i still don't think it'll set tomorrow i really wish we were i really wish we were i'd like to be but, proven wrong or right about that it's, i it's like... i yeah I, I i i love your optimism and i i i i I hope and kind of almost pray that you're correct, but my instinct is telling me it's how land claims work. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. What, what if it was a mining oh, claim? They're, they're going to talk about mining claims. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I, I've done, I've yeah. done you now. Now you're just, get, now you're just getting desperate. <laughs> now, you're just, now you're just toying with him. Yeah. So I, did say, I did say a question before, guys. Yeah. I don't know if you answered it while I was... I'll go um, from the beginning if you want. We'll start question time. I think we've gone yep. most out what we wanted for today. Yep. Okay, um, question. The Gecko asks, how do you think CAG will handle creating Earth? Could we see Earth-like vehicles and have things to do like in GTA 5 but Star Citizen style? Imagine a 2947 Ferrari or owning a business. I don't think they'll create Earth like it's a Google Maps. I think they may do major city landmarks and I think they've announced up to seven different landing zones on Earth. There are, there are three we know of. There's, uh, I think, LA, Moscow, and yeah, I can't remember the third one. No, they've announced things like Beijing, um, Moscow. I've heard London. I've heard um, okay. New York. I've, I've heard I've, I've, there's, it's quite a few. It's got more than almost any other one. That's why I said it's about seven from from my last count. There's quite a few, but I think if you want to go like and find your house or something like that, it's not going to happen. Um, I think that they may have some really interesting things like they may have destroyed areas like some wars happened or um you know uh where we have deserts now there might be a, a thriving oasis or um a city or something like that so they'll, I, don't, they'll definitely... I don't think we'll find oasis i think we'll find um more what what i'm well, you know they can make the continent yeah, well, of china that's... a nuclear waste zone from a what what i'm, what I'm trying to say is they're going to redo the they're going to redo earth to fit the yeah. storyline yeah, uh, it's a thousand yeah. years in the future. Yeah, I just took it. the oasis as a as a, a thing to say it was a desert. And now it's something else because that we know for a fact, according to human history, uh, places that were once oceans are now deserts. So that mm -hmm. they'll take geology, ge not just the story, but geology into account. So you know, um, some of the ice ages lasted a thousand years. So and and apparently we're almost due for another one. So there could even be a part of the Earth where. Um, it's unfrozen or frozen or whatever. They, they they can play with that if they if they so yeah. wish. What you, I'm saying. You got to remember the procedural gen city generation system was originally made to reproduce Paris. It's actually yep. robust enough, and if they get it polished enough, to do a, a number of different building styles in different cities. So yep. I'm not sure if they're going to put that much effort into it, but I imagine they're leaving this until they really refine the process before they yep. tackle it. Earth's a tricky one because you've got a pre-established content that you've got to push forward a thousand years but the easier way from a game development thing is is make the changes law based or story based that way yeah. you don't have to do as much work purely and well you certainly know we've got we've certainly got some imagery from um cities of earth so we've got we've got the imagery from the poster for the uh, manchester mm. um thing we've got the one put from it was put out for um gamescom a couple I, of years imagine. ago Imagine if they took Google Earth and then put it through a procedural generation system to try and copy what is already here, but then change like up to half of it. The problem is, though, is the time it would go in and take to change it. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Like, no, no, I quick, agree. I completely agree. It's quicker to build. It's quicker to build it from scratch and go. Oh, the reason there's no freaking uh, let's just pick a city at random. Uh, there's no Egypt, <laughs> is because it was taken out in some great earthquake, and you go there and it's just like all volcanic or some shit. Like they can literally so, do that. So, would we find a ruined Eiffel Tower, or would we find a new, you know, a good Eiffel Tower? You know, would um, it ruins might be war, in a space museum, but it's still there, or in a space <laughs> museum, or something like that? Or would we find their pyramids, or would they be gone? Or you know, same question you were kind of saying, what's Egypt going to be like? Did you two see the concept of New York, where they actually had the older buildings and they were yes. in some kind of stasis shield? So that so they are going to have parts where you know you can see the uh, Empire State Building or something like that, or, or they might even have the Empire, the Eiffel Tower, as you're saying, in the same thing where they've put them in stasis to to keep them. Um, so I think you will see 
landmarks from today in there, but then the whole city around it's going to have completely changed. Yeah, and, and, I, 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 and, that, and that's deliberately from a, a story standpoint. It's also cooler, so they can evolve the architecture, but also it takes less time. Well, you, you and that also sixty comes years into in the, the past, sorry, go. cities landscapes have completely changed. Mm-hmm. Yep, you know, so oh, like, I, what, I know, a thousand years know, you can only imagine. I know my own city is if you actually look at like even clips from a hundred years ago like there was no bitumen on the roads for crying out loud like it's just it'll be the same thing like look, we probably won't use bitumen in a hundred you know another hundred years we'll probably all have grav plates or we've even seen those solar panel roads for crying out loud we don't know what it's going to be in a hundred years so hell it's beyond our lifetime that's on, crazy you, you look you look at australia and you go back 250 years and it's bush <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hasn't changed just, much, has it? I'm trying, to give, I'm trying to give you a point. We're going a thousand years into the future. If anything from today survives yeah. to a thousand years, I'll be freaking surprised. I know we're doing all this hor- historically, uh, what do they call it? Um, historically listing of buildings and stuff, but they won't, that probably extends their life by another hundred years. But like, so, I, I live in a city where they try and hot, historically list a lot of buildings and people leave them to become abandoned because they're too expensive to maintain and i'm going off on a complete tangent here but the point i'm trying to make is that um unless they're really significant landmarks like say the eiffel tower or 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 the statue of liberty or something like that there's no way they'll last that amount of time but it's just they're too expensive we we suffer so execute we suffer being australian where our oldest buildings are at most 200 years old yeah, but if we go to England, you've got cathedrals that are over a thousand years old. That's right. You know, That's so true. we're we're suffering from that lack of buildings. historic buildings. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now they're getting to the other extreme where they're trying to make every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and, and I mean that in right. building terms. Yeah, that's right. And it's uh, it's just not going to happen. And 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 it's really interesting because you can go to Sydney as an example, and there's a lot more awesome old architecture in sydney as opposed to when you go to melbourne which is a newer city um and it's only about a 50 year difference but uh no actually it's 75 years but and yet, my point yeah, yeah the, there's way better buildings in sydney than there is in melbourne and um lo- where i live is launceston and it's actually Lon- melbourne was built out of launceston so we have actually even better architecture than them so um it they there's certain places in Australia that will just be more historically significant than others. Um, and then there are and other it'll be the same. Of crap. Yeah, it'll be the same in it'll be the same in the game because you'll like, and everyone wants their city to be in there. So Australians are going to want Sydney, and then you know um, Americans are going to want New York and LA, and um, you know then you get Russians that want that, and then there'll be Europeans that want France, and yeah. So everyone's going to want a city that they can relate to. Unfortunately, I just think it's not going to happen for everyone. No. I'm just going to uh, segue, Camok Tudor, um, he doesn't ask a question, but he says, I wouldn't know what I'd want in a Drake ship, but let's segue into, um, isn't it uh, Friday for a happy hour? They're going to put a vote out for new Drake ships. What do you think we're yeah. going to see? I, I've heard, I've heard that it's going to be a choi- choice of three. But yeah, that's, that's, what, I that's what I heard too. And, and yeah. it's not going to be a big capital according to Disco Lando, so take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, he doesn't know what no. a capital is, apparently. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but I also, apparently we also are told that, you know, no more fighting ships this year, so, hey. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, it depends what we choose, but also I don't think Drake will ever make a capital ship. I don't think they're the right manufacturer to make one. I think I've said that over uh, quite a few times in the last couple of days. They're a cheap budget manufacturer. Capital does not stream budget to me. And that, that, the capital that's is like, about as capital as I get, I think. Well, I, I'm thinking a Drake version of a of a, a capital ship would be like a flying barnyard that you, <laughs> you know, shoot it once and it just disintegrates. Like, um, yeah, I, I, okay. Well, I think one of them could be that salvage ship I mentioned earlier from Drake. Yeah, um, I think that salvage. would that that really Real fits into the to the piracy theme. Um, I know you had another one, Hayes, but I forgot what it was. What was the other one that you thought would possibly fit into... Oh, the drug lab. Was that you or it might have been Dyson? I might, I a, a, it's Dyson. Yeah. yeah, a cheaper science drug lab ship. I can see that being something that would Cheap, work really nasty well. science and sort of very darkish sort of, you know, yeah. sort of thing. Evil genius no good. type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what, what was his term? He said breaking bad um com- combi van or something like that or um <laughs> what was the what do they call it in the states those camper van yeah RVs. camper van thing. yeah rvs that's it yeah. yeah so like a drug lab rv 
Yeah. I could see oh. Drake doing a ship a size of um, the, the Hammerhead. That would probably be the biggest dead go. So I could mm. do big ships as long as it wasn't needing that capital kind of yeah, shipyard. Yeah, yeah. I, I could very much see a, a competitor to the uh, Hammerhead coming from Drake. I 100% agree with that. But when people say capital, I start to think... Um, Idris. you, you, you got to remember Laris. that they've competed for military contracts in the past with the Buccaneer and the Cutlass. So, you know, they... Yeah. Yeah, but that's a fighter. I can see that. But, like, capital just seems way... And also, when you build a capital ship, as opposed to when you buy a Buccaneer, a Buccaneer you can build in a factory, um, and they have a lot of production planets on their in their law. When you go to capital, you pretty much got to build it in space. They don't have those facilities. So, I, I know I'm basing this on law, and they could totally change the law. That's true. I just... It just doesn't seem to fit... Like, And they're, they're really, really pushing this game into law like i i i've yeah. worked on games before that are heavily law based and i've worked in ones that are not law based and i'm telling you this game is really up there with the law like and one of the things, things we're talking about one of the things we're talking about we're talking about weapons Sorry. weapons ships the modules everything has law it is just it's so rich with law like I, I really just want to hammer that point home that they really bind everything with law in this game and it's a big thing, so you you have to take more weight with it than other games. Sorry, yeah, they don't like changing the law. They don't like retrospectively going, oh well, we we did that. They want it to be, this is a law, and so they really work hard at maintaining that, yep, that level of law and keeping it good. They've got a law team for crying out loud. How many games have a law team? He he, he was a writer from day one, man. He was yeah. there and like. They've built the game on this law. They can't and just... they've got and they've got an archivist who actually maintains and keeps everything in order. Yep, yeah. it's it's you know, um, it, it, yeah, you can change things around, and I'm sure they've probably done it once or twice, but they really don't like to, and um, but they are like 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 even to the point when they did that next grade starship, they asked the people designing those ships, hey, by the way, you got to slid it into our law, like. Yep. It wasn't like, like they, they put those restraints on the people in the competition. So, you know, and that was, what what's that, three, four years ago now? That's, it's been there for a long time. Which is why I always hate the Redeemer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it fits the law. I don't think um, it fits the law. That's probably why they tried to ditch it before the community voted it back um, then. Actually, actually, it does fit into the law because um, what it was, was, it was, a, it was a ditch effort by Aegis because they were on the out because of the Mesa stuff, and they used the reclaimer to show that they were an everyman company. And if you actually look at the law behind the Redeemer, it is deliberately an Aegis ship. But that, because that's it was the law they brought in for the Hammerhead now. It shows you how much love the Redeemer's getting now. Yeah, so they, the, the Redeemer, the reason why it was done that way, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was also designed to be for the everyman, but it was also designed so the military could reclaim some of the costs and stuff. I, I, I can see it fitting. It is a stretch, but it, I can well, see it. The, the, the bit that I, I always think doesn't fit the law is the engines, because it is the only ship using those engines. If it's fitting, lot, you've got to have other ships the, using that style. I think it's the only ship that kind of fits those engines because it's such a bloody big ship but that said i would like to see those engines on say the redeemer i know that's a sore point for Hayes, but could you see that style of engine scaled down on the side of the redeemer Hayes? redeemer aren't we talking about the redeemer redeemer engines on the redeemer no <laughs> reclaimer he's reclaimer. done it again okay claim uh, oh, so reclaimer the really engines on a redeemer okay now i got gotcha. you yeah I, I could see them doing that um it'd look cute yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I could see Reclaimer yeah. Engines on a Redeemer. You actually did say Redeemer Engines on a Redeemer. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. my bad. I was bad. so Sorry. confused. I was like, oh. I was just like, why is he looking at me like he's like dead? Yeah. Because <laughs> you're tricking him. You're tricking him. Yeah, I, I, I always get that. He says, Hammerhead is so good, I can't see many people even wanting a Redeemer anymore. I, I agree, that that is tragically true, unfortunately. I still, the Redeemer is. Uh, it's the gunship. I, I think it's it, the new big ass kick ass gunship. But okay, the the Redeemer is going to beat everything else to hell because it's an amazing gunship and nothing can compete to it. And the Hammerhead comes along and they go, "Whoa!" <laughs> no, the difference said, is the uh, Hammerhead when it's fully crewed will it use less crew than Redeemer for it's just its gun thing. And the Redeemer is also a dropship, whereas the Hammerhead's not. 
No, 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 no. It is a dropship because it has a proper cargo lift and can probably most like take a rover. Um, you know. Okay. It's a good dropship because like it can shoot the crap out of everything into a paste before you land. Yeah, and, and it will like, land. But can it get into a station? Does it need to? No. Yeah, well, uh, you've got the point there, but if you can get close enough and you can just, because it's more defensive, you can probably yeah. just park outside and make an EVA across, like literally. Yeah. You can lower the cargo bay and they all just fly across. There's so much covering fire potential on that ship. It's like, I, I feel safer getting out of that even if I had to traverse a little way, you know? Yeah, I, I think the uh, the difference between the Hammerhead and the uh, Redeemer is really price. The price range. Yep. And that's your firepower. And the crew requirement. So, yeah, if you can if you can afford a Hammerhead. Yep. But if you if you're going mid range or smaller, then you're going to go for Redeemer. I think the Redeemer um, you cheaper to operate too, not just the the initial purchase price. I think yeah. it will be the run. And I, I said that to Hayes like I, like how many. How many redeemers do you reckon would equal a hammerhead? And and that's that's some math. You, one he, he doesn't reckon one turret. You okay. reckon one turret? One the turret whole redeemer. Right yeah. So you're saying what six six redeemers to one hammerhead? Maybe, maybe five to be fair, because you know. But yeah, I think uh, uh, I think any redeemer is just going to be shredded by uh, a hammerhead because it's just oh, going to focus. Quite... Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. It's just. It's a matter of one is an armored uh, tank and the others are flimsy little small things. And well, the Redeemer's just... got those specialized shields, though, man. There's some things you're not taking into account. I, I, think, I think you'll find it'll probably be two to one. That is my it's called... speculation. It... And it's also a lot more maneuverable. It, it's got those special engines that are meant to make maneuverable. It was meant to have special shields that no other ship had. Um, so it's I got could... a lot of guns for its class. They're even saying they're talking about adding two more extra remote turrets to it. I man, I I, I, I can just see... I'll take that bet and I want to see. I'll I'll, I'll see it once they've done with Redeemer. I'll, I'll, I'm going to remember. this. I'm going to write a note in my phone. <laughs> and I'm going to put a time on it and I'm going to go. Now what do you say? And I, I'm always going to play this video back to you. Five Redeemers versus one Hammerhead. Sixty seconds till Savage and Red Paste. That's, that's all. Hey I Google. See. Hey Google, set a reminder to remind Hayes that how good the Redeemer is for six months. <laughs> I want to be reminded in six months. Your reminder remind has that how good the Redeemer is for six months from May 27, 2018. <laughs> okay. Did you hear that? Cool. Good. It's all set. Yeah, good. I think it's a safe bet myself, so I'm not too worried. Yep. We'll see. Okay, I think we should go and finish off the questions. Uh, we really went yeah. on for just that one there for a bit. It was a good topic, though. Yeah. No, it was. Wu Li asked, do you think the 600i Explorer will be capable of exploring as good as the Aquila? I will say yes. <sighs> I based on agree. what they said. I could agree. It's got, I think based I think, on what they said, I would say yes because even on the, the even on the, the scene that's got two scanning stations as opposed to one. I, I think it's going to be equivalent. I think it's definitely not going to be beaten, or it's it's about the same ballpark for exploration. Um, and it's I think ship. it's I think it's not as versatile as an Aquila, just because the Constellation is like the multi-crew versatile ship of ships. But if you're just talking about plane exploration, I think they're about they're going to be the least equal. I don't think it's going to be, uh, if anything, the 600 might actually have some advantages with the, the stations <laughs> and the computers. Yeah, I, I, they've stated today that the three, uh, 600i and the Connie are uh, comparable, so yeah, I, I think they're much, much of a muchness, to be honest. Next question, I guess. Okay, and uh, execute, maybe you could do something else. You can't really explain it. There's a color out of the tank. Sorry, you want me to do what? I'll just look at the chat. Yeah, I, I don't have access to be able to do that. Alright, I'll try to figure it out. There's not that many questions. <clears throat> questions, do you think there will be a stealth cargo ship? Because uh, many people want one. I think we've got stealth cargo in several ships. Retaliator. Uh, Retaliator has 
the ability to do stealth. The Connies have always had that, at least some of them have always had that stealth component, hidey hole area. Um, I imagine you'll find that in the similar thing in the 600 series, but there are some ships that have been stated as having that. So, yeah. Um, the other one I can think of is the, uh, not stealth so much as the, uh, Taurus has apparently a secret compartment, so you could do some smuggling and so forth in there. Um, yeah, the only real stealth one, uh, and th that's probably more from the, uh, silhouette, what do you call that, with the, the, the scanning, the profile, um, w would be the retaliator. Mm. They, they naturally have that stealth profile. Uh, built into all the kind of Aegis ships in that <laughs> stealth profile look. The Connie Phoenix had a um, did have a dampening field around a a small cargo hold, and that was actually yep. stated in law. But they're the, they're the only two I actually know of that really fit into that. Okay, next question: uh, When will the Hammerhead and Polaris become flyable? Oh boy, here we go. Execute you first. Oh, um, I think you're going to get the Hammerhead before the Polaris, quite frankly. Um, I think the... We haven't seen a lot of RSI stuff. Um, obviously, they've already got the um, Constellation built there, so they can build up into the larger ships for RSI and down into the other RSI ships. But there's not a lot of RSI ships in general. If you look at that image of the ship scale, um, you can quickly see which they've got more ships of. We do know that the Aegis Pipe 1 is a lot further along, um, and it borrows heavily already from other Aegis ships. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll probably see the Hammerhead within the next two years and probably the Polaris in about the same. But, um, ooh, yeah, I'd, I'd still put the, I'd put the Hammerhead in front of the um, Polaris there. What about you, Albert? Oh, well, kind of the same, although my point to counter the not having many assets in terms of that RSI metric for capital ships, RSI do do the Bengal, and the Bengals are That's used true. in Forgot about that. 42. So they've actually been built, will have been building up those assets for the Bengal and other things. So they actually do I have that style guide. I for totally forgot ships. about that. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, that's true. But they uh, tend to build the mid-level ship and then yep. build out, and so they've got the Connie, so I knew they could build up into it. Yep. But what I meant is there's not a lot... If you actually take the Bengal out and then go look on the ship scale page, yeah. there's not you, a lot you of... Look, you look at the number of ships and the ages are... Like like we were saying the other day, not another Aegis ship, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was really surprised the Hammerhead was Aegis. Like, to be honest, that could have been a Drake ship. I, I would have made it a Drake ship. Personally. It could have been a Drake ship. could have been... Yeah. It could have been any of those industrial-looking ships because it's kind of got that feel. Mm. Uh, but, yeah. Hey, here's my uh, personal opinion. It's a bit more of a tangent, so very much speculative. But uh, the Hammerhead was put into uh, flight for the uh, Tavaran War in the Mesa area, and post-Mesa area it came back again. Uh, this is a really old ship, as opposed to the RSI Polaris is supposed to be uh, past Squadron 42 date, I might not... Am I wrong, Algorithm, about that? I think right. so. I think, I think so. It's, so like, it's, it's it's new. That's new right. It's a new, it's a new design. It's a new design. It's only, you know, it the latest design was Squadron uh... Forty Two because it's 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 just recently after the Squadron Forty Two timeline, I think. And so, like uh, the Hammerhead, uh, you may want to include into Squadron Forty Two because it's a very sort of iconic ship. It fits that role. Um, they don't have that hundred meter military vessels currently. Mm. Um, I think the second reason why I, I think they really want to get this into the production pipeline faster compared to almost other ships like they might want to supercharge and push this through is because of the turret designs and the gameplay this could be the test bed for better turret systems which they can then use the tech that they develop in this ship and remodify it onto all the pre-existing ships or and their turret designs as well because if this becomes a very good implementation of their turret mechanics they will want to then use that success and reuse it in things like uh a javelin and the Idris, um, which then also again affects what 
the Squadron 42. They want yeah. consistency in Squadron 42 to what's in the PU, as opposed to people looking at them and say, that, that doesn't look anything like what was in Squadron 42. There's a, that disconnect. And so if they're serious about turrets, and I think they are because they made this ship, this ship is them mm. being serious about turrets, they will want to rush this ship in so that they can then use that design in their turrets in their big capital ships, which have horrible, yeah. horrible turrets right at the moment. Because they're all man turrets and their visibility is poor. So I, I, I think they want to adapt, if, if they're smart, adapt the lessons learned with the hammerhead and the progress and moving forward with the technologies and the turrets so they can readapt it in other ships. So I could see this being rushed through. No, I agree. 100%. Yep. Yeah, I could see that. Um, just because of the turrets. So if I want to make turrets a good thing, we know the javelin, we know the Idris are loaded with turrets. Mm. They want to get that. They want to get that sorted, and they've been saying for ages we're working on turrets. We're going to make turrets. You know, we're working on improving turrets, and mm. I think this is the the hammerhead is the uh, end Best product case. of that. Yeah, it's the guinea pig, perhaps. Mm. Question: uh, You got three hundred dollars. Would you have a base tally and Taurus together, or an Aquila and a Caterpillar? Um, just to get off on the point, Caterpillar is two hundred ninety-five. So. I, I don't, yeah. Two yeah. and the defender. What was it, defender? Yeah, he. Like, okay, I, I got that wrong. He wants. Would you get a tally, like a tally um, base and a Taurus together, or would you just get an Aquila or a Caterpillar? Probably the Caterpillar if I had only those choices. Hmm. Uh, I'm a or you could go the, the Taurus. Yeah, the base and the Taurus. And... Well, it's two ships versus one, too. So, yeah, probably the two ships, actually, now I think about yeah. it. I'd, I'd probably go the base and, and the Taurus. Um, you're kind of locking yourself in there with the Tali, though. I think the Tali is really... It's got such a limited scope now. You've really got stealth cargo or bombing. And I think bombing is going to be a weekend event. I don't think it's going to be an everyday affair. So, really, stealth cargo is the only thing... Tali's got going for it at the moment. In my well, opinion. it does have it does have the um, the troop ship. The drop Again, it's a, a weekend of it's it a weekend of It does have the um, the habitation pod. So yeah, but could we get could we see more modules? Possibly. Yeah, if it's got more modules, yeah, definitely. And again, um, that might be a good spot for to go with the retaliator base because if they do more modules, it'll uh, make it more viable next question next question Rylan McPhee if you had an LTI defender what would you buy if you melted it I wouldn't, I wouldn't melt, melt it. it I wouldn't melt it <laughs> <laughs> simple next question what, what did I melt to get my defender is the, is the question you should question. ask freelancer Max yeah. or Connie Taurus is that with you Algrid uh, Connie Taurus I'm a Connie fan so there you go. Um, uh, I, I'll tell you what, um, if the Max can fit in an Idris hangar, I, I might consider taking the Max Good over point. the Taurus. Um, okay, you... on, that, on that ground, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know that yet. So. No, yeah, no. I'll, 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 I'll agree with both of you on that point. But yeah, I'd be the Taurus as well, especially mm. at the price point. Mm -hmm. question. Uh, next question? Uh, Hayes previously mentioned the importance of self-sufficiency for smaller orgs looking to expand. While escorts will obviously be key in this, it seems preemption is just as important. Could you all discuss smaller scale scouting and defensive strategies, for example, protecting two prospectors targeting high risk value? Uh, Terrapin? Uh, he's talking about, yeah, obviously scouting Terrapin perfect mm. for a prospector they're like you know they, they're yeah. like buddies that could get married it, it wouldn't sound yeah, like you could do do it all with just two people too that that's a small org op right there oh you terrible scouting you think it's guys you, mining you, get the hell out of shit comes that's your simple defense strategy i i would take what what would be a simple defensive thing if you needed to get in a dogfight let's let, let's fake te, terrapin and the prospector they're basically uh, sitting ducks they're not going to kill anything. They're not even unless you went talk. unless you went Hornet Tracker, so you can do a bit of scanning and you got a bit of combat. This is if you're talking just like real small, like two people. 
Mm. Um, but if, if you're going small org, so what's a small, small org? org? Five people? Five, ten people? Yeah. Five, yeah. ten people. So, so definite for scout, though. Mm. Uh, I you're suppose... after scout. Oh, go on. But I suppose it's a military, then. Um, hmm. I suppose... Uh, any sort of uh, fighters, I, I don't see a small ship being that good at defending those, if you wanted to. Ideally, like, if you've got five people, I reckon you'd want at least one scout, mm. you'd want two people mining, so two prospectors, yeah. and then you'd probably want two people on, on defense. Um, just uh, either two fighters, or maybe something a bit bigger, I'm just trying to think of what that... I'd would say be. Redeemer, but if I said Redeemer, Hayes is going to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> you, but how, you could, how about you combine the... You, the... Could, you could do a Redeemer, really? Seriously, could you not do a Redeemer? Really? What if you combine the, the Terrapin into, like, a Sentinel? So it had some force projection, um, along with the, the scanning and the scouting. And then you then... The scanning and the scouting is only in the Warden variant. It's not in the Sentinel variant. The Sentinel loses a lot of that stuff. The, um, the scouting variant... There's huge aerials on it and the, the scanning uh, sets. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, its turret is a, a scanning well, type. Well, we'll check that. But from what I remember, the Warden, the default Warden, um, it, 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 the Sentinel is the... The E War, oh, man. I think I got my names backwards, but whatever. The the default variant is the scouting variant, and it's got scanners and the habitation type module. The E Warfare variant is uh, hacking and E missiles and uh, those type of variant, and then the Harbinger, obviously, different thing again. Um, but I'd have to go back up and read on it to be honest. Well, I still think Redeemer is a good choice there, actually. Um, I'm just, you know, how my stance is on the Redeemer. So. Yeah, I know. Mystical, I know. Magical unicorn. <laughs> But mm. yeah, I, but I, but once you get past the Mister Mandigal Unicorn and actually look at it for the size it is, that's a good ship for defense. I think it is. You can have two people in it. You could you could have um, one person on turrets, remote controlling the turrets all remotely. And if you had the av you know those modules installed, so you can control them remotely, and you could literally have one person on guns and one person flying. That thing would be a freaking beast. I'll, I'll toss in a possibility of chucking in something like a Connie. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, like, uh, because yep. that gives you cargo hold, so you can pull your loot away. Yeah, it mm. got, it does have those big size fours, which is basically like a hammerhead turret. <laughs> mm. Yep. Um, so that you know, and that would that would be something for a small group. You still want your scout. You could just uh, have two defenders. Actually, now I think about it. Or you could have two, like a saber and a, a hornet or a super hornet or something like that. Any any combination of just two fighters <sighs> works as well. Yeah. I, I love the idea about the constellation though, because you can put that extra ore um, in with the constellation. And you, uh, you could you could even take an Aquila and have that as the scanner instead of taking the um, the Terrapin, and then therefore you could have an additional fighter again. Yeah. Well, on top if, of the if you take the Aquila, you've got your P fifty two. Yeah. Chucked in there, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I reckon Aquila as a mixture of scout, um, mm. two prospectors, and uh, maybe a fighter. Yeah, that's, that's a solid combination. Yeah, I like that. That's actually quite strong. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question, mate. Okay. I think we're getting down to the lo the wire here. Only a few left. How would you cover the radar deficiency of the Hammerhead without deploying a monstrously expensive ship like the Polaris? I realize my question assumes the Hammerhead medium radar package isn't robust enough for its own to preempt long distance threats. Um, it's all about the the scout you take with you, um, Terrapin. Yeah. Well, you, 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 Ter yeah. Terrapin. Terrapin's going to be. It? Terrapin's going to be such a big part of almost any fleet, man. Like I don't think people realize how big that. Like I I am I. My, my real big question about the Terrapin that always comes back to it is, is I want to see where it stands next to the Carrot. Is the Carrot going to be way better than scanning the Terrapin? Or if they're going to be the same? Or, or, like, the difference? Because that really is going to significantly tell you how good the Terrapin is. But the Terrapin's got, like, these two massive scanner things on it. It just looks like it's going to be... That's all the ship's about. I reckon like, it'd be at so, least constellation size are better and scanning. 
I, I, I think it's going to be almost as good as a carrot, quite personally. But um, it, the, I expect the, the carrot to be bigger because it's a capital size. It, personally, I don't think it matters how good the scanning is on a Polaris versus a Hammerhead because you would never use them as your forward scout in the first place. If you were doing proper scouting, the scout's supposed to scout ahead before the Polaris and the Hammerhead get in there so they know what they're getting into or want to rear out their yeah. course in the first place. <clears throat> so the and whole again, idea... Yeah, it's backwards. I was just going to I was just going to say the the Terrapin reinforces that because of all the high level armor. Um I can see it going in to the battle, seeing shit turn around and coming back. I can see it going through like a a wormhole first before anyone else and go, "Oh shit, there's bad guys here." And turn around and run home. Like it, its main defense is running, and that's why it's got that really high armor. And in fact, they've kind of stated that in the the thing uh, the other day in the uh the anvil sale was how the armor comes over for defensive purposes and then goes back to release heat so i think that heat thing is going to be it's going to limit how much you can do so you won't want to fire guns while you've got your armor on or anything like that you just want to tuck tail and run mm -hmm. um yeah that you and i have talked about this ship so well, there's a lot of ships we've talked about but that that's one in particular that we've talked a lot about um we, we think it's really unappreciated uh by a lot of people yeah, yeah. I, 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 there are no other scouts that come close to Terrapin. You say, oh, I can use a Herald as a scout, or I can use a, a, a Constellation Aquila as a scout. I'm like, just a Terrapin. I think the Herald's a bit more um, e-warfare yeah. than scouty. I think I can see it hacking stuff and, and possibly doing a little bit of scouting. Mm. And in fact, I would almost just see it like a scout sniper where you focus those little radar it's dishes. A, it's a predator. Yeah, if if the if not looking everywhere, if the straight ahead. Yeah, if the if if the if the terrapins a radar dish, it's a telescope. That's how I see it. Yes. If, did that that analogy make sense to you? Yeah, and telescope's not a good scout. A radar dish is. No, yeah, it's right like area. I can yeah. see something over there, but I can't quite make out what it is. <laughs> it, it it might be two people. It, it's good for being sneaky <laughs> and doing sneaky things, but it, not necessarily good at finding the sneaky people. <laughs> the other way around, you know? Yeah. Wooly says, I'm sisuing my Terrapin for a Starfarer. Uh, look, all, you, yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah. get tons more utility out of that Starfarer than a Terrapin. Yeah. Um, it is a yeah. bigger and a better chip. In fact, I think you could do more exploration with a Starfarer than you can a Terrapin. The simple fact it's got the facilities it's got longer range it's probably got longer range sensors because it is a big capitalistic type ship <clears throat> a large mini capital whatever you want more, to put it and ground more, more versatile yeah it's more versatile yeah. it's a better yeah. pick if you know you can money. fit the, we know you but can fit the ursa in it not, now, a, so. not a great scout no no <laughs> not a great scout too slow yeah, the terrapins and the terrapins an additive vehicle you add it to the rest of your fleet or to your orgs fleet um where the the starfare is more like it's my only ship that's mm. yep. yeah yeah and, and it'll be useful it'll be good it's mm. a good ship to have okay inj asks i have two defenders and think about upgrading one to a whole c this week any reason to keep it as two defenders not really buy a banu and keep the two defenders. <laughs> oh that's right yeah. <laughs> That's like another hundred dollars, you know. The ah, uh, man, seriously, even for the hundred dollars, you trying to tell me the banner is not worth it? Seriously? Yeah. Like, would, I, like if, 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 even at their current prices, Algorithm, would you still say the banner merchant man is better than the whole sea? Definitely. Yeah, hundred percent, man. You're talking about a ship that's priced at three fifty, and they've just pretty much said, "Oh, it's bigger than the Polaris now." Yeah. You're getting a capital ship for the price of like a whole. Well, is capital it like size a whole, ships. It's about a whole D in price, isn't it, from memory? Uh, I think the other idea is that the Banu had, can earn the money to buy a Defender very, 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 very That's quickly right. because it is the sort of ship that makes yep. money. So, so yeah, if, and, if, and if it you is were... the sort of ship with those stalls on it. So you know, you set it up. It's a store. It's a shop front. Yeah, yeah. you do want to. Yeah, I'd say you'd still want to keep at least one defender, yeah. Just to defend the Banu. Maybe he can only afford and to upgrade one defender to a Hulsey, but I guess, you know... Yeah. Yeah. And, okay, and the other what? thing with the, the defender is, yes, two-man fighter. Yeah. It has bits at long range. Yeah. The second, the second crew position is basically manning shields, and it has the phalanx shield. That's a Tavaran type. Tech I thought it was, the, it was the gunner, is what the main... Secondary, oh, 
I remember it from the Q and A. Um, here's a question for you though to help him. If if he is uh, cash strapped, would he be better to melt or upgrade both defenders to one Banu? Yes. Yeah, I'd do I'd do that as well. That's where I would do it. If you really are strapped for yeah. cash, I'd I'd drop both defenders and just take the Banu match one. Yeah. yeah. And earn the defender in game. We're probably yeah. telling him what he didn't want to hear, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably not what you wanted to hear. But that's that's what. Okay. Yeah. Seems a, a little obvious to some of us, I suppose. Um, Vlo Gaming asks, I don't want to host a player crew on a multi-crew ship in early gameplay of release. However, I do want a hauler with some bite. Is the BMM viable as a solo hauler with maybe an NPC crew? I think so. Every single one of Safe those turrets is remote. Safe space, yes. Um, unsa uns what do you call it? Unsecure space, no. So you'd want to play it safe. Oh, well, I, I think in slightly not too risky space but not completely safe i think this is one of those I, ships I, I think as he gets more crew then he can move out like if he gets more real players he can move out in unsafe yeah. space yeah. but he's got to realize he could run the ship with minimal crew and minimal npcs in unsecure space or when he uh, sorry in safe space hmm. when he goes out in the unsecure space he's going to need more npcs or more crew so therefore more costs so initially Run okay. it in safe space. Like, I'm expecting you to be able to do a hull C in safe space and not get into trouble. <laughs> but I, I imagine an NPC crew with a, in a banner would be able to take on something slightly more difficult than safe space, but I don't expect you to... I can go everywhere with this, because uh, nothing can go everywhere with now more serious, okay. dedicated escorting. And there's do, always going to be limits, and, you know, when you... You get proper uh, player crews on your banu, you will greatly increase um, the difficulty that you can tackle. Do you think you'll ever really see the whole series ships in unsecure space without a, a, oh, not without, a, no, a no, large? No. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they got to have to have the escort, but I think that's how it's been designed. I really do. It's designed that that is the escort needs an escort style series of ships where highly... the banu is more like the lone gunman, yeah. so to speak. There's always going well, to Bano be. was always put as a sorry, go on, haste. There's always going to be a level of difficulty that is too hard to tackle. It's just a matter of how far you push into that that danger zone. Um, so the idea that this ship can always manage to get through that, um, no, that's not how it's going to work. It's going to be a, a huge exponential scale. There'll be some places where no matter how how well armed your group is, um, they've pushed too far, and you know yeah. they've. Yeah, they wipe out. So it's 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 there's always going to be somewhere that's going to challenge you. Sorry, yeah. all I can hear yeah, now that... is um, what's that song from <laughs> Danger Zone? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think the big um, difference between the hulls and the BMM is the hulls are literally your, you know, your your trucks, your your regular mass haulers, um, or your clippers, right? Your regular sailing ships whereas the bmm was always your um, merchant armored, clipper ship but it's also your blockade runner yeah so that was how it was originally built you know it's chunky it's tough it's armored and it can break the blockades whereas you actually watch the it... the holes they're just they're just hauling have you read the original i assume you have for the banner mesh man it was designed off merchant clipper ships from the early 1900s yep uh, from like 19, like just around the same, just before the Titanic, like 20 years before the Titanic. Um, yeah, and they were all designed for speed and they were light freighters that were just basically designed to run really fast. And it, you put that into the blockade runner is, it, that's why all the guns are forward facing. It's just designed to bust through whatever it's going at and just keep going. Uh, I guess the way I kind of look at it in a way is if, um, if you were to look at the, the whole series is like what we have today is the really big sea haulers. I would see the Banu Merchman is a as a freight train. It's quick and it just it goes there. Did you just laugh at me? Sorry, <laughs> I, I think I just it, it, it must be a Mad Max version of the freight train because it's you know full of guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I took the guns off it for that analogy, but you get what I'm trying to say. Hmm. The other thing with the, the Banu is that it is recognised, because we know the Banu don't have a standing navy, the Banu have a militia, and the, and it's an, a generational ship, so it is basically a core of them, as we understand it so far. It is a core of their 
their militia, so... Yeah. I said that to Hayes the other day. I don't think the Banu are going to have a great deal of many number of ships, but I think they're going to all be kind of like the best ships at what they do. Um, yeah. And it, it's funny, there's only two ships announced, and they're both awesome. Uh, Jay Black asks another Banu M question. Do you see any value in the Banu Merchman in a science research focused org? Perhaps justification to sell rare specimen outputs? I'm trying to justify keeping this inevitably amazing ship rather than CCUing to a Carrick to allow for multi crew planet side exploration coverage to feed science production. I can look, my response to that in terms of the Carrick is simply this. They polled people um several times now but in the last poll that i remember seeing over 75 percent i think it was like 79 or something but don't quote me on this this is i'm trying to remember and it's a, a statistic so it's a little hazy but really large amount of people want to do exploration so anything that's not exploration is going to be in high demand simply put um the fact that it's cargo you'll be able to use cargo almost in tandem with almost every other profession in the game so um, it'll be valuable for that purely because, like, if you find some kind of really important artifact, even if you find it with a terrapin, like, an, uh, like you could be able to put the relics onto that ship and sell them. Um, it, again, if you go into, say, a drug lab or something like that, you could still use the banner to transport the drugs or whatever. Um, that's my response to that. I, don't, I, I think the banner is going to have a lot more uses than people realise because cargo is the first profession they're putting in the game, which tells you how important it is. Um, cargo, blockade it, runner, armour, size. It's a, it's a great support chip for any, any org, I think. And any and profession I think going. It's, it's very disingenuous to try and um, post box this into just a cargo ship. It is not um, a cargo ship. Yeah. Um, it uh, is a, right. a it's... heavily emphasized multi role ship. It's like if you yeah. look at a constellation, that's a multi role ship. Anything the constellation can do, the banner merchantman is going to do it a lot better. And yeah, that'll do it in space. Yep, whether it's scanning, whether it's going to be uh, cargo or putting down ground vehicles to, um, you know, just salvage anything this is a ship that is just so multi-role it's not just a floating bazaar it's not just a cargo ah. ship it is going to be one of those ships like all the other ships like a, a from a starfarer to a carrick it's one of those jack of all trades and it's really well positioned so um, um probably the only thing it doesn't do that we really is scoop fuel and, and refine it and sell it and hey it could okay. even do that in the end and perhaps not even focus that much on mining but i mean how many ships are focused on mining? <laughs> one two 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 oh big ships i'm saying yeah, so. okay one yeah one it's like um it... i'm actually on the um original concept page for the merchant man and i'm trying to find it but i know somewhere on there because i remember reading it way back when um it literally states that it is is the best cargo ship in the game um and it's not it's not the best as in it carries the most it's the best as in it's got the best of everything um so it, it it's it, it it's basically that merchant clipper ship analogy it's it gets there faster than the whole series ships um it gets there safer because all the cargo is internal and it's also got the bigger guns but it, it, it's i think it's somewhere it falls somewhere between the c and d and cargo capacity mm. too but then again we know it's grown so if it's carrying as much cargo as a d no it's it's not, not it's it, it less than a c now um they less they, than a c they dropped it down to about 3600 or 3500 yeah. like but um the thing is it is one of the most well-rounded ships unlike like a whole c which is it's just for cargo um, it can't do all the things that most other ships can do that are multi-role. The Banu can do all those multi-role things and probably even a bit of military. It's, it's, yeah. they've made it. It, it is. Hmm. Sounds a little yeah. bit at the moment, like we said the other day, it's like a little bit between the 890 jump and say a whole series ship combined. Um, and the other thing is being like, alien is also awesome. I, I, I like a, my alien yeah. ships, even Good with ships the heavy tax. Are modular. You can swap out the different sensors to target a different sort of, uh, if you want to scan for mining or you want to scan for science or for an exploration or to scan for ships. These are things you can put in better systems. Um, they all share very similar sizes. Um, you can customize these ships to the role that you want to serve. And I, 
the Banu Regiment's no different, and the Carrick is no different, um, the Starfarer is no different. It can take on a lot of these yeah. roles by customizing uh, the gear that you have installed. And that's one of the things CIG have said from the start that they want with their ships is the ability to swap out those um, components and to, to fit the ship to what you want. Hmm. So it feels like you've actually got a real ship. And it will. Yeah. It'll feel lived in and it'll feel like it have to be maintained. Yeah. Um, shall we move to the next question? Because there's a few sure. banner well, actually, questions uh, there now. Uh, before we get into that, the question, do we have a, do we own a BMM since it's, since we're on the BMM? I think that needs uh, to have a plural added to it. Yeah. Uh, to <laughs> I've got I've got one, but I know these guys have got multiple. <laughs> we got BMMs. Lots. We do. I think at um, Hayes at one point had like what did you have? Like forty of them or something? 14, 14, well, ridiculous. Four upgrading <laughs> a lot of them, yes, but uh, a lot of yeah, I have, I have a fair few bound of Yeah. And it's 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 a very safe bet for a ship. Puts, if you, he puts the U yeah. in Banu. <laughs> Okay. Well, so yeah, some... I think I think that I agree. The Banu is a, a very safe ship. It's probably one of the like I like I like the Connies, but the Banu I think leaves the Connies for dead. Yeah. yeah. The next question, uh, Star Citizen eight ninety J, is the Javelin still coming with no weapons? No weapons. Yeah, it's just the hull. Yeah. If anyone ever thought there was weapons on it, they they never read the original concepts and sales. Um, yeah. It was. Never I think that's promised to have I think weapons. That, uh, I think that's going to be the scary thing about our organ in particular, because I want to know how many of those we have, and I don't think we're going to be able to get them all fitted. Like, uh, actually, what worries me, like they got the same size weapons for the main turrets as Banner Matchman. And, and oh, okay. Quite a few Banner Matchman. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we just just strip the Banner and we're, stri we're stripping. We're yeah. Stripping interest. Now I understand banner. why you've got so many of them. We just sense. take it out on the weekends and then put it all yeah. down. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And then, uh, next question, uh, Jay Black, do you believe that the Banu Metro will be made more valuable, valuable by CAG constraining vendor interfaces? It's been speculated that some modules in the Endeavor may allow for vending the drugs cooked there. That would seem unfair to a discrete merchant like the Banu Metro. Can you see my bias? Um, yes and no. I think the thing is, though, the Endeavour, I think we kind of said this yesterday, the Endeavour's a ship that doesn't seem like it's going to travel a lot. I think it's going to be more of a stationary ship. I think it, uh, the banner, is, its main thing is going to be going around to different places, almost like a circus, and, and selling its wares and picking them up, and ro almost like rotating meta, where the, the, the you're not going to be able to have anything to sell if you're not staying in that one place. Like, if I'm growing, like, they've give an example, they're talking about growing drugs. Some drugs can only be dr grown in certain places because they might need radiation from a certain nebula. So you're going to have to sit there while they grow. It's just that simple. You have to go where where you need it. And um, unfortunately, I think, yeah, you, you might be able to sell them to other people as well. That could be awesome. But... Who's going to travel all the way out to RCEP or whoop, whoop whoop to fucking get some drugs when they can just get them off the guy that stopped by the next door? You know, My like... personal opinion is the Endeavour is a production facility for bulk production. And the Banu Measurement, mm. if you want to sell something to players, um, you probably want a mix of many different little things so that they say, oh, I want this thing that's hard to get, but this guy has everything. So it might be like, this is really interesting. I'll go here and I'll buy several items. But he won't it, do be... mass trade from destination A to destination B, which is what the endeavor is going to be doing. I just got this image in my head of like the, you know those CD porno stores. Like you go in and it's like a normal place, and then he goes, the "Hey, want to buy some drugs?" Yeah, they yeah, pull yeah. The, They pull the curtain back. Hey, want to buy some drugs? It's like, yeah. <laughs> so there's this was, banner and it's just CD bizarre. That's the banner yeah. measurement. The oh, CD I'm bizarre. I'm thinking of those uh, movies. You know, the guy opens his coat. You want to buy a watch? And <laughs> yeah. Watches yeah, all yeah. down the side, you know that type yeah. of. Yeah, but but I'm, I'm thinking it more like actually in the banner. So yeah, yeah. But the watch thing I get as well. But um, yeah, I I I, I it probably might even be that seedy little alien store. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. I can see some kind of like Chinese little old man selling frogs legs and bits and bats and all that alien stuff. So bats that are wriggling around your leg. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> you see on Tatooine where they sell like like uh, they have the frogs that have all been cooked and stuff like that and yeah. different animals in jars and very that's what I see in one of, one of the stores on there something like that and another one might be selling artifacts another one might be selling drugs but one or drug that's weapons. legal in, yeah. you know, one drug 
Yeah, one drug might be legal in one area, but it's legal illegal in another part. So they might have to swap and change their merchandise dice depending on where they are. And um, that that also brings up a question where how often the banner is going to get searched because if they can sell it, if they're a traveling bazaar and they're illegally allowed to sell it in one area, does that mean the government might be a bit more flexible? As long as they're not selling it, they might let them have it on the ship just because they know they're going to go back to somewhere where it's legal or are they going to be really vain about it and crack them down and, and, and make sure that, that they don't have it on there every time. So, I, mean, I think it's about so how much given, you bribe them. <laughs> yeah. So given, given the, um, the xenocentric or the xenophobic uh, attitude that seemed to be creeping into the UEE, mm. how, you know, that might mean we do see the Banu, any Banu ships being this, this ship might be crewed by humans, but how do we know it's not owned by Banu? Let's uh, let's scan them. They're taking jobs away from from us, you know, just like those Zeon ships. You know, I, so. I thought that uh, the UEU was moving away from being xenophobic ever since the end of the Massa era. You know, uh, that's right? what they say. Yeah. The the government is moving away, but the people aren't. It's mm. probably it's it, it, so probably similar to how the real world is at the moment. We've kind of you know, we've had the the black rights movement in the seventies and it's moved on to feminism and now it's kinda of starting to go it's this huge PC area and now people some people are saying, Oh, it's going too far, some people it's going not far enough and so I think it's in a bit of a flux and I think that the uh, area they're in now in the UAE is probably very similar to where we are in the real world, where we really need to start to do right by other alien races because we were so bad for so long, and then there will be other people going, "Hey, we're doing enough. We're just being, you don't you want to be fair, but you don't want to be greedy." And yeah, I think it's art imitating life in a way. Personally, do you have any more questions? Oh, Twitch. Oh, asks, what do you guys think of a hammerhead as a on, smuggling guys. ship for low sex space? It's not really a cargo Hammer ship. Hammerhead, I mean, definitely not very smuggling. Yeah, using a hammerhead for smuggling in low sec. High, like, uh, like illegal goods potentially, because that's the only way you're probably going to get any profit. Is that like, like, like stretch it, dude? Like stretch it. Like if he really wants to use the hammerhead, is that? It's um, not specialized for cargo or smuggling, though. So. No, but 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 if. If your whole aim is to get this cargo from A to B and you don't care how you get there and you kill every guy along the way, we're talking you do it. here, right? The security, they're going to hunt you down. Um, you know, uh, yeah. uh, the, 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 what do they call them again? The, uh, the pirates. He's thinking no, of no, using not the as pirates, the, the law force. Um, he said the low advocacy. Sex. That's low, so yeah. that's low security. So that's like medium level, oh, yeah? All right. But why would you it's be like smuggling in low sec? Because of the law. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think mean, he's trying that's to say legitimate. one of pirates. Yeah, one, yeah. one of pirates. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I to be I honest, I would again, say guys. it's all good. I, I would personally see it more of a ship that would potentially escort or guard a, a cargo ship, ship yeah. a large ship. But if you were in a pinch and it's the only ship you have, high illegal cargo in low sec, yes, I could, I could, I could. In a pinch, it's wouldn't be a... preferable. It doesn't have. What is it like? What, 40, 40 SCU in cargo. It, you might as well what's take another a ship? 600. What's another ship is that? 600 what's I. An, yeah, what's another ship that's got 40 cargo that's a cargo? 600 variant? I. <laughs> that's a 600 I. It's true. But it's a, yes, but what's another cargo ship? I said a cargo ship. Colors. It'll be very close. Yeah, so that's comparable. I, and yeah, and I, I, I could see the, the cutlass being. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think it's a bit overkill. It sounds like you must be smuggling. Jeez, uh, I don't know what would be that yeah, valuable I, to I take don't, out. I don't. I don't think you'd get your money back. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, hey, that I sounds. Think if that, I think if you took something bigger, like say a hull C, and had way more cargo, and maybe it was all illegal stuff, yeah. and the hammerhead was covering it. Well, even that... hull B, hull B, and a hammerhead. You're enough cargo there to hopefully yeah, pay that. for everything. Yeah. 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 Yeah, even a whole B in a hammerhead would be freaking OP. Mm. Um, like, what's the cargo? Was it like 200 cargo units on a whole B from memory? 386 that's, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's like, what's that? Like, fucking, maybe. It's ten, almost, almost 10 times what the hammerhead can hold. More and than, that's only a yeah. crazy amount. Okay. I think I filled up in, in 3.0, I think I filled a Connie with 
it's full cargo, so 97 units, and it costs several... I think it costs almost a million to fill it. Uh, Star Citizen... Uh, it costs a fortune. Sorry, though, um, Star Citizen 890J asks, thoughts on using the hull with the spine contracted as a gunship? <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. Nah. Too, too, too expensive to too expensive. risk. Yep. I, I mean, yes, it, it's spine, more, it's, spine out, and guns on every single freaking. It's more tanky like than it, hammerhead with the shields because they're huge fucking shields for a hull D and a hull E. But they don't even a hull E will not have even half less than half the firepower of a hammerhead. So, mm. and no, no armor. So why would you choose it? It's like the hammerhead is specialized as a gunship, and I. It sounds nice, like maybe if you're in an absolute pinch to, to jettison your cargo and collapse in and try and fight it out, but that's desperate as opposed yeah, to great guy. And if you go in the idea of Q-ships, Q-ships historically have been an absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. If you really could... Worked. Do you remember when they were talking about actually putting... being able to put turrets in cargo or on cargo containers on the outside of the whole sea during yeah, the Q&As? Yeah. Yeah. If you could do that, it would be just... I, I love the idea of being able to like, look like you're a cargo ship and all of a sudden you just there's people on all their turret locations they just open all the cargo containers and all of a sudden it just turns into this huge wall of turrets. Okay, that would I, be great. I, I take it back. Yeah, maybe, maybe that might be a thing. They did. They have said that and I, that does pick my interest. Um, I don't think it's going to chase Especially anything you... down, but if you could pull up a surprise on someone... Maybe. Yeah, if you do it like a bait and switch type of thing, so you make them think it's got cargo and they come in and then you just open up every single cargo door on one side and they just have all these turrets. Broadside. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that's actually that's actually a Q-ship idea, you know, you kind of yeah. send that into a pirate area, draw the pirates out, suddenly, oh, it's not a... But historically, Q-ships have never really worked. Yeah. Mm. I think it's there's something that... Rare, there's very rare times where a Q-ship idea where you've got the ship pretending to be something else and comes out as not being very rarely has it worked i think you'll see it a lot with bigger orgs though if a, a particular was being attacked by another org a lot i think they'll set a trap i think traps will be a a big thing it, it um, might be useful as deterrence though like i mean if you weren't a heavily armed uh hull e with a light escort someone might they might think oh we'll go attack this and then when they get there they're like uh maybe not let's turn around because <laughs> yeah. it's like turrets everywhere Got to look at the cost of the price, though, too, don't you? You know, well, yeah, you're like you got to hold that. It, it, you're not getting it's paid. It's going to be that. a hard. It's going to be a hardship to, uh, like, high cost to run, mm. and then the turrets. It's not its main function. Like you just. If, yeah. if only you could get the contract hauling turrets, and then <laughs> <laughs> it's just. A... <laughs> you're yeah, all I'm set, the guy then. that takes all the. I go. I, I work for the consolidated outland. I take all the turrets to the new pioneer. Yeah. Base builds or whatever. Yeah, that'd be you great. That'd be awesome. yeah, yeah. You'll always be safe. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And testing the turret, they've got to be in a position where they can be tested on en route yeah, just you, in case. You get paid yeah, for the yeah. test firing run. Yeah. It might. It might be worth say. You know how it's kind of like the cube, uh, uh, as in uh, every corner of the of the cube on the the whole series. If you just had one turret on each corner, yep. So because just to expand the amount of guns you've got, have still have cargo on each corner than they do on the actual ship. So it might be advantageous exactly. to maybe even just take the guns off the main turret sections and stick them onto those corners, or 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 it, as well as additive. So yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the things is is how are they like? Are you going to be able to power them off the ship out to there, or are they going to be self sustained power and run off like? equivalent of gas i know they don't I'm run on sure gas, about that they have talked about yeah, putting like extra that. shield generators and reactors on the cargo things and attaching that as extras as well so you know there's possibilities mm. for both i suppose mm. all right unless you guys got anything else to add next question a question yeah. does it make sense to keep my reclaimer if i'm operating at solo until npc crew will be a thing or am i better off going for a different industrial field like mining I think mining is so focused that it is not as multi-optional as what a reclaimer can do. Yeah. I mean, uh, reclaimer has a mix of exploration, uh, salvage. Um, it has some cargo for the stuff you find. You could probably take a rover, although we haven't seen the the cargo lift yet. I'd be very interested to see that. And unless you, unless you go down to the pros the prospector, yeah. 
the other mining ship is just as big as the reclaimer in terms of crew requirements anyway so um, that's a null that's a null question the the uh, the orion is eight people and the this is this is max crew here yeah. i think and the max crew on a reclaimer is five minimum crew on a reclaimer is four i'll just double check the um the minimum and max crew on the Orion, and I'll get back to you. But um, yep. yeah, I think you'll find that the Orion actually is more because it's capital class, where the uh, the Reclaimer is only um, large. So yeah, though it, though it's big, it's big as a capital. It's only classed yeah. as a large because of the the, the crew complement. Most of it is a cut is the cargo space for the uh, the minerals that you get back. If I if I had to choose between the two, I'd probably stick with stick with Reclaimer. Because yeah. of the reasons you guys said, it's it's Reclaim. more versatile. And as, as some Kermit Tudor just asked, the rain cannot land on planets. That's right. Yeah. Reclaim is my favourite ship from a gameplay perspective. Hmm. So I'm I'm biased probably, but I own both, so I think I can afford to be biased. Hmm. Um, Reclaim is not my favourite ship, but I do own it, and Orion is probably RSI, probably my favourite industrial ship. But yeah. Uh, Four, four, minimum of four crew on the Orion, max crew seven currently on the stats page, so I was a little wrong. So, yeah, there's about the same minimum number of crew on both ships, but definitely two more on the Orion, so... Um, so, in terms of the question, it's an old question, because unless you go down to a prospector, mm. that both ships are requiring the same number of crew, and the retaliator reclaimer probably has that little bit extra gameplay. Yeah, I think your reclaimers. I said this a couple of days ago too. Your reclaimers going to have a bit of exploration slash um, industrial gameplay, where the Orion's going to be heavily industrial based. So you're probably going to, as Algrid just said, you're going to get a bit more gameplay out of the reclaimer. And also, I think the reclaimer probably works um, when you look at the Orion. It's pretty much going to be teaming up with, uh, obviously, combat to protect it in both cases of both ships, but um, mainly unloading to a cargo ship, where something like um, the re the Reclaimer will unload to a cargo ship or will possibly land. work in tandem with um, the Crucible. Or it uh, will land. Yeah, and it can land, yeah. But um, I, I, Hayes and I have talked about this before. Um, because of all the minerals that it stores in the back of the ship, you could literally be able to transfer them with an Argo or something straight to a Crucible. The Crucible yeah. can... Because you're out salvaging ships, if you find a hull that is quite repairable, it can feed the materials to the crucible and turn it back into a fully functional ship rather than breaking it down. So I I, I, I see them when they go out in their group, you know. A, a, yeah, a yeah, you want you want a you want a crucible oh, with you. Yeah. Oh, we found a really good one. We can actually repair this into a fully functional ship rather than melting it down. And then you got to ask yourself, is is it worth selling? Do we get more for selling it as a fully functional ship or do we keep it ourselves? It just gives you more options. And I think um, being able to interact with other ships more, it just makes it a better buy. Getting back to the whole point of the whole reclaimer. I yep. think people who buy Orions are really, really mining uh, focused type people. They say, this is the career I see myself getting into and this is what I want to do when the game hits. You know, so uh, it's... But people who buy Reclaimer have a bit more romance towards uh, exploring planets and, you know, just, finding oh. ancient wrecks and, you know... You just uh, called it, me a romantic! Oh, I love it! Oh, it's great! Yeah, yeah, they, they, they've you got a more wide day, perspective what they, they want to do with the Reclaimer, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. But, yeah. Oh, oh you, do, you just don't know how to talk to a lady! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Volge no, Gaming no. asks, on day one would the BMM potentially be able to start hauling and generating credits or should I also look at a fighter to run missions in order to buy inventory to haul? I, I think you will be able to run that day one. I don't think you need a fighter just to try and make money. I think just by finding a mission that's appropriate to the Banner Merchantman will be earning a hell of a lot more than you can do in a single fighter. I, I and think, and I think uh, that'll be the same with every ship. Every think, ship yeah. is liable. There'll be missions that are yes. like, applicable to them, and you'll be able to make money. Some ships, some ships will make money a lot quicker than other ships, but then they'll have overheads that come in. So every ship's going to be catered for in that regard. That's I right. think they'll have it so you at least have enough credits so you can at least start doing missions with any one ship that you wish. Yeah. Um, and if 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 
they don't, they'll at least have the options for you to buy some credits because they've stated in the future they want it so you can um, buy credits with real currency. So maybe if you are an idiot that only owns an Idris, then maybe you might have to chuck 20 bucks or something at it to buy some more credits so you can get your first mission off the ground. I, I don't see many people that won't. Like, most people that have bigger ships have multiple bigger ships, so... Well, I think the only way... The smallest... The, in, in, going on Idris' claim, the smallest pack you could get that uh, has an Idris in it is the... Um, event, um, Amada. The Amada pack, and that's got half a dozen ships, so... Yeah, but you no can one get... will have an Idris. You can get... An Idris, you, can, you, can, you can get the Idris on its own, but they just haven't sold it like that for a while. Well, they sold <laughs> them just the other day. I mean, right. Not without a game there. pack. He's talking about mm. the Anomatrimon. There's no way that's not going to be making money out of the gate, and they're not going to have tons of opportunities to do so. It's you know worst case worst case scenario. You just sit there in the middle of nowhere, and people come in and buy stuff out of your shop. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think you'll be fine. Um, get slightly off tangent of that question though. Uh, Hayes and I have speculated this, so this might be interesting to hear from our grid. But uh, we haven't talked about it on the show though either. Hayes is. What do we see our org day one doing? Like, do we go, all right, so we've got these Orions, we're going to go out and do mining the first day. Are we going to go straight into a, doing a huge call, ha, cargo hauling run together? Because I, I know with the guys we play with, we're going to be doing whatever we do together. Um, um, yeah. Honestly, God, you, I'm going to be stopped paying fuel with the staff errors until we have enough to do whatever the next step is. And uh, then it'll be Orions and Reclaimers and whatever makes us the most money. Um, we'll kickstart to, that to move into so, so that we can actually refit our javelins. Because... Well, I, yeah. I was thinking uh, <laughs> probably won't go into cargo javelins in for the first a holly is week. my first yeah. um, yes, point yes. of interest. Hayes wants to take his holly. And... Yeah. yeah. But, you know, so, I, even if it's loaded. just loading huge amounts of fuel from Starfarers, that's a start. Yeah. Okay. I reckon I reckon we'll get Starfarers, I reckon we'll get some mining, and I reckon we'll get some cargo. That's where I see a lot of the big orgs going initially. Um, probably fuel priority 1A because everyone's going to need fuel. But then again, you look at the um, universe, 90% of it is uh, NPC. I think the fuel's automatically going to be there. Um, but getting the fuel for ourselves for free to fuel the other stuff, 100% agree with that statement. I didn't really look at that. So yeah, we probably are going to have star ferris first. Well, if we can't then, afford to buy but we're only, you're only talking about one, you're only talking we about need one or to two generate cars, them. Right? And like mining and fuel and resalvage, these things fill or or hulls and you know or cargo things, and that's the start of uh, you know it, we generate it because we can't afford it. So you know the idea that uh, we we can't afford to fill a hull is no. You can afford to fill it with something um, with the base sort of stuff, but you might not be able to do the more valuable commodities straight away. And the, and the other that. question. The other thing with the Hull is how much time, from what we've said in CIG, is how much time are they going to make us spend in terms of loading and unloading? They don't want it to be really long, though. They don't want that to be the boring gameplay. But they, but they do puzzle. want it to be balanced against, say, the Hull 8. Yeah. So they don't want you to rock up with your Hull E and empty it out in 10 minutes and then go out and do another load. But your Hull is going to be like, they could do that in a minute or two. It's not a lot yeah. of cargo in that. No. Yeah, but the Hull E. And the other, they don't want you to go up with your hull E and empty it out in five minutes and then disappear with another full load well, because well, that's not balanced. I think ten minutes load. is fairly balanced. No, mm. we'll have to wait and see. Well, well, well look, I think I, they'll do that as they work out the economics. Economics, they'll work out. Okay, yeah, this has big risk because it's a ship that's targeted all the time. This is a low risk area, so the car goes down. You've just flooded the market, so the price has dropped. Uh, Smart you know, people so don't all flood of those the market things. though. They uh, diversify what they're pushing. I think the one thing that Hayes, I, I hate to burst your bubble, man, but I don't think you're going to have enough money on the first day to fill a whole E. He, he's literally just stated that he felt, filled up his constellation and it cost a million credits yeah, close. to fill up his constellation. I think you might be doing some cargo runs on the first day with smaller ships, but I don't think you'll be even be doing on the banner in the first day because it'll cost too much to transport and you'll be going with, like, say, say you were only going with 10% of what you could carry. This is my point, though. It won't make it valuable. You, I think you, I think you, you need to start small and move up. You do start small if you're putting all the fuel you get from your sapphires right next to and loading those canisters up into a hull E. 
you're generating the cargo that you're filling it with. If you've got a whole bunch of Orions going and you're filling in to... the mining into the hull E, you're generating yeah. that cargo. I need, I need, I need to step in because I, I need to kind of clarify myself. I'm talking as a solo operator. I think if you're working solo as a group, don't get hullies. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is, as an org, we might go out and staff areas and get ten loads in one lot in one run, mm. and then we go in and put all that fuel onto the whole E, and it'll fill the whole E. Yeah, yeah, that. 100%. But as a solo operator, no, you're not going to be rolling that for yeah. a while. So you'll, if, be, if you'll got... be rolling your hull A or your hull B. Or... But, but uh, yeah. Banu Merchantman, potentially, yes. I think they'll have missions yeah. to be able to take cargo to make that profitable to run on day one. You know, it's mm. it's a different, different comparison. Yeah. Um, then you got to start asking questions. Do you have stuff to things like buy relics and that and all that? I think, I think that... Um, there are certain financial ships like the Starfarer and Orion that have a place that will those ships will feed what you're able to do on the first day. And that's why I brought the Starfarer and the Orion, because I saw those as, as things that would feed and speed up what I was able yeah. to do in the game. Jay Block asks, we know that combat ships are nothing but expenditures that need to be subsidized from profits. I agree with that half. Half, I'll explain why after, but it's a budget balancing act for a profit conscious orgs. Do you all believe that persistent heavy defense platforms like the Hammerhead can be reasonably sustained from medium sized orgs? Will the cost of escorts be intentionally prohibitive to force safe grinding downtimes? Like, I, I one thing is, I, I don't see them as co cost prohibitive. Um, if you're flying around in safe space and you're taking a Hammerhead with you, of course it's cost prohibitive you know you've, mm. it's a complete waste why did you need it in the first place but as soon as you um take venture into more dangerous space and you can't survive without that hammerhead defending you it's not a, a drain on your resources it's an enabler it's a multiplier yeah and if you take that hammerhead with you and it doesn't fire a single shot it's still insurance that's, that's right. what it is it's a it's a deterrent mm. You don't know whether someone's on the other side of the horizon, you know, with a, uh, you know, with a telescope looking and saying, "Oh, there's a guy." Okay. Well, this is the same oh, argument. He's got a hammerhead. Let's leave it alone. People think yeah, that they cost say money, that. right? But literally torpedoes just say that, are not costing money; they're saving money. If you are forced into a situation where you have to use a torpedo, the alternative of not using it would cost you more money than not using yep. the torpedo in the first place. So, in other words torpedoes are not cost negative they're cost positive because on the end of the balance sheet you've actually saved money and people don't and realize like, that and That's they're less likely to work. stuff with you because you can just fire a whole freaking yep. torpedo of them and blow them up like if it's really easy to kill someone with a torpedo even if it costs the whole price of an avenger for one missile or one torpedo they're not going to stuff with you Every that's what it's a deterrent again it's, it's about what it loss is. prevention it, it's like it's insurance. Yes. Insurance is a good word for it. Yes. It's like we said with the uh, retail, with the, the old tally. You know, if you've got the tally running as a merchantman, someone comes up and sees it. Are they seeing a tally with, loaded with missiles, or are they seeing a merchantman? And if you're running cargo, that's your that gives you your time to bolt. If you're are running you... missiles, are they want you know do they want to do do they want to tangle with that? It's the same thing with a cargo retaliator. Like, do you stuff yeah. with it because you think it might actually have torpedoes on it? Like, if you can clearly tell a retaliator is carrying cargo, it's going to be meh. But if you can tell that it like can't tell what it's carrying because of its stealth ability, then you won't stuff with it as much. So that again makes the retaliator actually a good option for stealth cargo. But anyway, I've gone off back to the original question: Is the hammerhead going to be cost? Uh cost problematic uh, or is it going to be able to sustain by other orgs it's the reverse the hammerhead is a multiplier which allows those orgs to realize and take advantage of higher level of profits than if they and didn't small... utilize it and may take advantage and of a... it and it's a small crew requirement so yes. uh... and it's at the lower end of the the heavier defense type thing yep. this gives you the most yep. advantage for the least amount of people to go into more dangerous areas for yep. smaller based operations yeah so, so I, reckon, also like I reckon any org any small org or any medium sized org if they're doing a cargo run they want to have an into dangerous space they want the they want that yeah. ship they want the if they have there. the hammerhead and they're going through safe space well they need to change their plans and uh find a more dangerous route 
uh, with their profits, you know? It's like they're not doing it right at that point, you know? Because yeah. they, they can I... earn so much more money if they yeah. do it right. And it, it's like but... what we said yesterday or the day before about the hammerhead as well. It's additive with the Polaris too, where this kills things under it, the Polaris kills things over it. You've got yeah. full coverage with both of them. So, again, more additive, additive, additive. Uh, uh, people, see the... people only see the negatives, but they don't see yeah. the double positive. Because it, it yeah. just goes right out of their head they, they they completely missed the entire point of having these ships in the first place yeah well we, we've done it on the show as well we've like well what's the comparisons between it and the polaris because obviously they're similar but when you put them together you get way more positives yeah. than trying to butt them up against each yeah, other don't, don't try and put them up against each other think of them being used together and that they is complimentary those two they complement each other like yeah 100 percent. edison trent asks questions you guys, do you know there is some uber rare metal in South Sisson? It's the Caterpillar brochure, and one SCO of this stuff is worth more as a Polaris, so if he has 40 SCO of that, wouldn't it... I don't understand that question. I think he's trying to say Finally. there's an SCU that's worth a Polaris for one SCU, and if you had 40 of it, it would be worth 40 Polarises. That's what I just heard of. What yep, he just... and if you had 40 of that, you could guarantee that type of... Uh... Mineral would be targeted and you'd be hunted down. And I think there was even a law story in Jump Point which kind of had that story of the, uh, the that's mineral. What, so that's, that's the sh thing you'd want to use your hammerhead for. Yep. Yeah. And on that what story, everyone was after that cargo. And every, you know, so yeah, if you've got that cargo, <laughs> you're going to be valuable hunt. enough that if someone got word of it, they're going to turn up with 10 Polarises on that one hammerhead and they're going to be like, yeah, this is yeah. worth it. Ten Polaris, Idris, Javelin. May yeah. Maybe even put it in a Taurus and hide it, or in a Phoenix and hide yeah. what but it actually is. That's the, the, the whole neighborhood will turn up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but also, if you if you had it, you'd probably talk with your your org on back channels and get them all to come out to you and escort you back. Like seriously, if it's worth it, they would do it. They'd bring yeah. a whole fleet to you to get it back. Kimok Tudor asks, does the whole series have tractors on the spine so cargo can be pulled and locked down to be transported? We don't know how they're going to transport cargo off the whole series. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be docks at stations with cranes and things or whatever they do. Maybe they're going to use Argos to and I think and quickly a, move them. Yeah. Oh, we don't know. I think, don't know. I think A's and B's are going to be used a lot to take stuff down the planet from those said space oh, stations. Yes, yes. Definitely. Um, because they because they can land. So I think C's, C's, D's, and E's are basically going to be taking them to space stations or to those. What was the 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 truck stop? They'll take them to the truck stops and yep. stuff like that. Mm. And then something will take them from the truck stop down, and they'll just sell them at the truck stop above a planet. They won't ever actually go to planet and sell them. Um, they'll just. Oh, it, I, I hear I on the gravity planets they can they can land and water planets they they can sort of get yeah. them. But I, I, the actual integration like interaction of uh, hulls with actual cargo containers and how they load and unload we don't know how they're going to handle that yet. First first deliberation will be just what it is now where it's automatic. Yeah, they'll, they'll work, but they have talked about people being able to do that process manually, and supposedly yeah, no. leaving it to NPCs. Yeah. And um, but but because it's bigger and external, they'll probably they might even invite uh, invent some drones that unload cargo, so they can just take off a whole crate and t dump it on the, you know, they do want to get that um, visual unloading, not just that it pops off and pops on type of thing, but that's all got to have this assumption AI for it as well. Um, um, I've got a package at the door. I'm gonna go. You guys, oh, yep. cover for me. All right. I don't know where the next question is. No. If anyone's got a question, it. ask it now, because he's got the chat window <laughs> and he's just left. So if you've got a question, ask it now, you're going to jump the queue. Um, they don't love us, they're not asking questions. <laughs> no, nah, they're listening. They're probably, delayed. they're probably on a 30 second delay too, so it's probably going to take a while to come through. Anyway. Um, yes, it is Origin Day. Yeah. Yes, we think but it is the least interesting day of a sale. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, probably be the same thing tomorrow with, um, with the Solid Outland. Are they what I think it is, Hayes? Are they what, what I think it is? Do you want to see you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the uh, Radons? Uh, yeah, that's, that's more mining so. rig stuff. Yeah, I thought so. 
All right, what's the next question, man? Because we, we, we ended that I question. I think we're out of questions. Left. All right, so we might wrap it up then. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for coming to watch us. Um, look forward to the stream tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be more interesting than today, the origin sale. But um, mystery ship, what will it be? And we're going to find out, and we're going to talk about it. If you have any questions, right. um, you can shoot it over to our Discord. <laughs> Look at all the questions coming in now. Because we asked for them. We asked for questions because you'd left, and now um, they're just like flying in. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have to do this now. Jay yeah. Black asks, question. Where would the Polaris fit strategically in a convoy only seeking to defend itself? My understanding is that the Polaris and its torpedoes are designed to take on capital plus threats in a proactive defensive manner. Beyond the most perilous space, do you all truly see a practical need for the Polaris force projection let alone the larger caps. He's missing the big picture there. The hangar, buddy. Yeah. It, it, it's a it's a refueling yeah. station for all your fighters. Boom. Yeah. Done. Your fighter you escort fighters. hangar. It's it's your cheap option to taking a Idris or any other ship with a hangar, That's and right. it's got the ability to Terrican protect the ant big stuff, the range. and it's still got some Couple turrets fighters. that can take out fighters. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could literally just have all your cargo as fuel and just refuel, like literally just use it as a refueling station Extend as well. It's like, it's, like, it's like, yeah, it's like a Starfarer combined with a combat ship. If you think of it like that, all of a sudden it, 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 it you, yeah. you go, wow, okay. And also it's a crucible because you can kind of slightly repair said fighters and re, re uh, supply yeah. Yeah. all that yeah, shit. So, so it's, so instead of taking a Starfarer, a Crucible, and, and whatever ammo and all that shit that you need, you can have it all in one if you really have to. Um, yeah. So, it, again, less crew because you've got less ships. But, and, yeah. and it's a ship that uses less crew anyway, so... It's got a lot of turret... It's got half the firepower of a Hammerhead, plus the supportive options. Once you start putting in two fighters and a scout, um, how does that compare to a Hammerhead? I think they're about equal. And you know, mm. actual force projection capacity. Yeah. Um, you, you've really got to think about that. Uh, the, the Polaris is the complete package, while the Hammerhead is just the one sort of focus. Yeah. You know, it's very good at yeah. what it does, but the Polaris is multifaceted, and, and that and then, balances that as a very yeah. competent uh, escorting role. Deterrent on the door torpedoes as well as we said earlier. Yeah. Like they like, like the 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 they're kind of an insurance. They're like you you don't want to ever fire them, but if you're going to fire them, that person is dead, and yeah. a and lot of people are going to be scared to, of them. I mean, the, yeah. the the alternative to not firing it will is most likely cost ship. you a lot more than the torpedo. <laughs> yeah, and you'll lose the torpedoes if you lose the ship anyway. Exactly. So yeah, it's like people don't. Yeah. All right. Next question. I think we got two more. Or one more. I'm going to skip that one because it's asking something uh, that I, right. I'm not quite... It says, how much have you each spent... Sorry, I'm not saying... Too much! You, Done. You, you can guess. Yes. Okay, we'll leave it Lost. to your imagination. Too much. Yeah. Uh, Ryland Mephi asks, would you rather fight 10 Aora-sized Hammerheads or one Hammerhead-sized Aora? What, 10 Hammerheads? Uh, doing the math on there, um, you've got an Aora versus 10 Hammerheads. It doesn't matter what size they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got t ten mini uh, hammerheads with the same yeah. firepower as real hammerheads, yeah. and then you got a big target aura. Uh, it's like a do you tank have to aim. Stick, it's yes. like yeah, just I'll fire off to the, the right use. side. It's like <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. That sounds a bit weird. Question. We'll I think it. the aurora would be dead regardless. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the questions. We'll wrap it up for today. Um, if you like us, subscribe. Uh, if you have comments, put them in the YouTube comments. If you have more specific questions with the CCU sale or um, suggestions, check out our Discord. As always, we'll catch you around. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I can't believe you said that. I know. I'm a dag. It's, it's so cheesy. <laughs>